They are hard at work today in our nation's capital, but many phones, tablets, and computers will be locked in on day baseball at the yard. They're going to be hard at work in here. The fourth game in three days finishes up a huge divisional battle. MLB Live on Facebook Watch in Washington, D.C. for a matchup between the Atlanta Braves and the Washington Nationals and NL East Tilt at Nationals Park on South Capitol Street. And hello to the Facebook audience around the globe. Scott Braun with you. It's a Washington Nationals team that we didn't expect to be in this spot, and they fall again yesterday to an Atlanta Braves team that has been surprisingly strong and trying to make a push to the postseason. We're going to get into it throughout the day. This is a Facebook social broadcast, so here are some of the rules. This is how it works. You can talk to us. They're not rules. It's fun. Join the conversation. Ask us questions. It's like you're in the broadcast booth with us. You can join the Braves or the Nationals fan group if you just want to watch the game with your respective fan base and quiet mode on your mobile device very simple just swipe right it removes comments it removes reactions the reaction from nationals fans is a bit of shock at this point in the season because you look at what they did last year and they were cruising through the national league east this time we're in august 9th 58 and 56 means you're six games back of first the Phillies were blanked yesterday by the Diamondbacks. The Braves were victorious, like I mentioned, so they improved to 62 and 49, a half a game away from the division lead, and just one game back of that first wild card. If everything ended today in terms of the regular season, the Braves would be in the playoffs, and you can see the Nationals on the bottom of your screen. They would be out of a wild card spot by five and a half games. And in yesterday's game, they didn't just fall score wise. Bryce Harper goes down with an injury. He actually stayed in the game after taking this cutter from Dan Winkler on his right shin, he was smiling, having fun with Freddie Freeman at first base about it. But ultimately, you wake up with a big bruise there. And today is a different story. Bryce Harper is out of the lineup. And now I'm joined by Mark DeRosa, who has played for both of these teams, covers the game nationally for MLB Network. FP Santangelo played for the Montreal Expos to start his career, also a part of the Nationals TV broadcast since 2011. This is a problem, FP. We're on August 9th. The Nationals have a deficit, and now no Bryce in the lineup today. Yeah, you got a must-win game, no Bryce Harper. It's 28th home run last night, hitting 339 since the break, so he's been locked in. But when you talk about the Nats this year, it's been two steps forward, one step back. They just haven't been able to get anything going. And with the Braves today and how well they played, it's a must-win game. They play the Phillies a lot more this year, but you got to stay within striking distance to catch them. And 32 games against teams above 500 to go. But the good news is the team in first place in the division, they play them nine more times. Atlanta just three more after today. The Mets and the Marlins are their only sub-500 opponents. 36 games in 37 days. It's going to be a grind for the Nationals. <laughs> and it's not going to be easy, Mark, because you look at Atlanta and what they're doing. Yeah. It's an infusion of youth, and it's working for them. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, 100% an infusion of youth, and it starts at the top of the order. Ronald Acuna Jr., 17 games since he's gone to that leadoff spot. He has certainly made a difference with a 991 OPS. He went about 450 plus last night. The way he gets the bat through the zone is unmatched right now. The top of the order, you got Acuna Jr., Ozzy Albies, another 2018 All-Star in his rookie year. But don't get it twisted a little bit. There's two veterans that back those dogs up right there in Freddie Freeman and Nick Markakis that kind of make the, this infusion of youth kind of work. And I think they're playing with house money. They're a scary team right now. And it's crazy when you visit both clubhouses, and I don't know what that is. FP, help us out. A little energy shot drink before day game after night game. I get it. <laughs> get it in you, boys. Here we go. You look at the Atlanta Braves clubhouse, and we go in there this morning, and it really does feel like they're playing with house money. On the Washington Nationals end, we had a conversation with Davey Martinez. He told us about the starter, Gio Gonzalez, who's on the mound. He's been struggling. But... Davey made it clear that he feels like this is a playoff-minded team in terms of the conversations that are going on in the clubhouse and in the dugout. Yeah, stuff we can't see, the behind-the-scenes stuff. So he likes the attitude. He likes the energy they've been playing with lately. And he said they'll go as far as their starting pitching takes him. Gio coming off a tough one. When the Nats win, it's all about their starting pitching. Saturday against Cincinnati, he fell and gave up six runs in three and two thirds. This is not an easy lineup to face. The Atlanta Braves have been swinging aggressively all yeah, season, yeah. and this is their starting nine, Mark. And, and to be honest with you, Gio better have his fastball command today because playing behind Gio Gonzalez and facing Gio Gonzalez, he's, the, he's a guy that will miss over the heart of the plate if he doesn't have his good command with a heater, he'll fall behind. And the last thing you want to do to an aggressive young lineup 
is leave something middle cut because Acuna, Ozzy Albies, these guys are swinging, swinging early and often. A guy I want to give run to right here, though, is Charlie Culberson. He has stepped up and given them some serious ABs in some big spots. Had a huge three-run homer yesterday against Tommy Malone that kind of got the Braves jump started and led them to that victory. Five of his eight home runs this season have come against the Washington Nationals. And for Gio Gonzalez, Mark, you're right. Davey Martinez told us this morning that it's all about fastball command for him and getting that fastball inside against hitters FP. That's the key. Yeah, when he throws that four seamer in, opponents are just 176 against that pitch. But like you said, Scott, last start on the fourth against Cincinnati, seven to one loss, gave up six runs on 10 hits and just three and two thirds. So Davey Martinez needs a good one on a Geo. Fastball, curveball, change combination. The changeup has actually been Geo's best secondary pitch. It used to be when Mark played with him, the curveball. I was going to say, in 2012, when I when I was a teammate with Geo Gonzalez, he, he barely broke that pitch out. And as he's methodically gotten better in his career, he has incorporated the changeup. It could be a devastating pitch for him. And here's the first pitch of the afternoon, and it is a first pitch swinging from Acuna Jr., and Ron, Ryan Zimmerman will win the race. And the Braves swing at first pitch more than any other team in Major League Baseball, and the Washington Nationals make the play defensively on one pitch, and this is the rest of their defense. Here's the Nets defense today, how it shades up. Soto Taylor eating the outfield. Bryce Harper out. We told you about the Shinberger he's featuring. Turner Rendon left side, Murphy Zimmerman right side, and Matt Wieters behind the plate. And after Acuna Jr. comes Ozzy Albies, again, one of the top five youngest players in Major League Baseball, a switch hitter. He plays a mean second base for Atlanta. 20 home runs on the season, 59 driven in. Steven said who's playing third base for Atlanta? That would be Charlie Culberson today and Anthony Rendon for the Washington Nationals. Gio is trying to milk that into an out. Did you see that? He picked it up. He's going to throw it to the first. Hey, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Well, he's in a rut. 6.37 is the earned run average in his last 11 starts. And he will be a free agent after this season. A check over to first, and he did not go around. The last 11 starts. What have you been seeing, FP? I just run into that Halloween ending every now and then, where the you know the the, the brain starts to go faster than the body will go, and the, the wheels kind of come off. You'll see Matt Weeders make a lot of trips to the mound today to try to keep Geo in check. Nice cut from Albies. It's fouled off down the left field line. Two balls and two strikes. It's just so funny to sit and watch these two guys at the top of the order, the modern game. I think I, I, I'm old school with a blend of new school, but man, to watch Acuna swing at the first pitch and ground out to second base, I can't help but think of if we would have done that in our day, you come back, Bobby Cox, you might not, might not be in the lineup. But the analytics say, let the young guys pull the trigger. It's a different game. I think a better game in a lot of ways, too. I'm enjoying watching the young players around the league, especially in the NL East. 3-2 off the end of the bat, and it's into center field for a base hit. First hit of the day for Atlanta, Ozzy Albies, the two-hitter reaches. And the three-hitter and NL MVP candidate, Freddie Freeman, will dig in next. His on-base plus slugging percentage against Gio Gonzalez in his career, over 1,000. Is that good? I heard it's good. I think what makes makes Freddie so lovable is, is is the fact he's starting to get the national exposure. I think this year he's always had it amongst the 749 other baseball players on any given day. It's just he handles left handed pitching. He handles right handed pitching. He hits for average power. He'll play the small man's game. He does everything that's asked of that three hole. Yeah, 10 game hitting streak. That's his third double digit hitting streak of the year. So he's just a model of consistency to your point. And a very simplistic swing, choked up a little bit, wide base, not a lot, not a lot of moving parts. So he never really goes into those big valleys throughout the course of a season. 
and the second best OPS against left handed pitching as a left handed batter. Only Christian Yelich is better outfielder for the Milwaukee Brewers. Oh one is ripped to center and Taylor moves over to his left and makes the play. There's a double play there. Runner Sue. was going and there, there is the double play. <laughs> <laughs> Runner was on the move in Ozzy Albies. An emphatic step on the bag to complete the double play. So the minimum three batters faced. But Ozzy Albies was trying to be aggressive on the base paths and that turns into a double play. Yeah right here Ozzy Albies has got to run on this play. There's nothing he can do. I think Ryan Zimmerman's a little upset right here. You had. Ozzy hung out to dry. He could almost ran it there himself. Michael Egg Taylor instead he threw, throws a one hop liner off Zim's chest. <laughs> Gio will take it and the <laughs> Nationals need a W today after falling yesterday to the Atlanta Braves by a final score of 8 3. Here's how it happened. Big game here tonight into a day game tomorrow. They don't have too much turnaround time. So tonight's a big game. Walton Avich career against the Nats. Four and four, ten starts, one complete game. So Eaton to third when that ball got away. Anthony Rendon, the hitter. And there's a base hit. And we've got a line moving right out of the starting gate tonight. Star! Charlie Culberson on an 0-2 pitch. Two out. Thunder and lightning for Atlanta again. It's unbelievable. Wow, Bryce thought it was out of the zone. And then Bryce Harper walking away says, you guys are terrible, both you guys. Swing and a drive, belted by Tyler Flowers. Break out the tape measure. Acuna with a mammoth home run. Those are two long home runs at this inning. Leaps at the wall, and he got it. Acuna doing it all on a tip of the cap from Fulton Evich. Harper to left, see you later. Juan Soto evidently has been ejected by Greg Gibson for bringing the last at bat up in this at bat which I didn't know was a rule. We'll see how big the fire is that may have been lit right here. The bases are loaded. Swing and a miss. He got him. What a comeback by Jackson from a 3 1 count. And the Nats have two on here in the ninth. And a liner caught. Flip to second and it's a double play. One ball two strikes to Taylor it's cut on a miss and that's your ball game Braves have taken two out of the first three in this series and one more to go and you could call him their number one on the mound. Anibal Sanchez for Atlanta will get going against the top three in the lineup for the Washington Nationals beginning with Adam Eaton who takes the first pitch for a strike. I think the beauty of Anibal Sanchez sitting with Brian Snicker before the game and you guys were in there as well is the fact that he can slow you down and then speed you up. It makes his heater play play a lot hotter than 90 91 miles an hour. What surprised me was I think FP you asked Brian Snicker if he would be the wild card starter for the team and they said yes. Yep. There was no hesitation. I got to be honest. I, I was shocked by that. I. I I'm not buying that. Why? Let's get Braves fans involved I'm not in the comments that. section. Do you think Anibal Sanchez should be the Braves starter if they're in a wild card game? Would he be your guy on the mound with your playoff lives on the line? Let us know. I say yeah because he's got the experience. You have one game to determine whether you move on in the playoffs. This guy looks like he has ice water in his veins. Plus, as a hitter, when you're amped up for a one-game scenario, I'm swinging. I can hit 98 from Fulton in a one game scenario. I don't know if I can hit a 76 mile an hour curveball that's bouncing. Yeah. I go to flip side. If I know a guy can't beat me with his fastball in a one game playoff I'm feeling pretty confident rolling to the yard. If I know I got to handle 98 with an exploding slider like Mike Fulton possesses if he's on there's not much we can do. He gets 89 miles per hour middle of the zone past Adam Eaton and the strikeout to start his day. And the rest of the Nationals lineup set up like this. Of course, no Bryce Harper today, FP. 102nd lineup for Davey Martinez today out of 114 games, and there it is. He says he likes Eaton and Turner at the top because if one makes it out, he's got another leadoff hitter coming right behind him. Juan Soto moves into the three spot, and you saw the rest. So he's had to shake up the lineup a lot this year because of injuries, and I think he just likes to shake it up. Speedy Trey Turner, the shortstop.
And from Rob Bennett, he commented, I always enjoy watching a guy throw where he wants instead of trying to blow everyone away all the time. So fans enjoy watching Sanchez. It's completely fair. I do as well. I'm just I'm just saying in a one game playoff. I can outstuff you. What about the excitability factor. What about the experience factor. You think in a one game that doesn't matter. Just go out there. I, and yeah I think it I think it definitely matters. I, I, I also think and, and this is just me. It's case by case. John Smoltz thinks you got to play the wild card game as an extension of the division series trying to win 12 games he, he feels like you don't have to run your number one out there. I'm a big believer that the wild card game you really aren't in the postseason yet. That's just my that's just the way I, I view it. I got to do everything in my power to get into that five game division series and then I'll see see how it shakes out. Plus do you really get a chance to pick your starter in that game if you're playing into yeah, exactly. that game. Yeah. I'd take that guy with the sunglasses on <laughs> in a one game scenario any day. That's right. Him. Well, he pitched the other day. It was a 3 1 loss. Two runs given up by Kelvin Herrera, who lands on the disabled list for the Nationals as Trey Turner works the count full. And fans all over the place with their responses. Charlie said, Should be faulty. I understand the experience and poise, but got to go with faulty, who can be unhittable yeah. at times. And that's delivered into left field. It's a payoff pitch base hit for Trey Turner and a one out base runner for the Nationals. Sometimes the barrel's overrated. You see the cutter kind of backing up and Trey Turner hitting it off the label, drops it in nicely. Now the Nats have 31 stolen bases on first. FP, do we get the line? Well, no, nah, it's a face. You want me to say there goes a no hitter? Yeah. You know, that's a tribute to Felipe Alou, who was the biggest influence in my baseball life and maybe in my life. And he would say it to the bench every game when the Expos got their first hit. He would say, there goes a no hitter. <laughs> and then we would sit there and laugh and say, you know, what are you doing? And he would explain to us that if you're going to win a baseball game, that's the first thing you have to take care of is the hit. And we're about. We're about to take care of the stolen base here. <laughs> Annabelle Sanchez, as good as he's been, does not hold runners. 10 for 11 in stolen base opportunities. And Trey Turner, like you said, he's got the green light. So the way Juan Soto has a keen eye, he might be giving him a couple pitches here to make a move towards second. Yeah, he's not afraid to hit with two strikes, that's for sure. The National League, or excuse me, the Major League Baseball stolen base leader over at first. There he is at the top, Trey Turner. Softly hit to short. Swanson will get the play at second, and then the turn by Albies not in time. So Turner is erased at second, and Juan Soto is safe at first with a fielder's choice. The stolen base is so much harder today than back in the day with replay. And if I touch you on the heel before the tip of your finger gets to the base, I mean, how many stolen bases would Ricky Henderson have taken away from him if they were right, sliding over the bag? So it's such a valuable play. Now that's why you see you don't see too many guys stealing anymore because it's hard to steal a base at this level with replay. Now Anthony Rendon batting cleanup today. More responses flowing in about who would be the starter for the Braves in one game. We pinned one from Tarver who said I like Sanchez but I think with what Newcomb and Fulte have done this year and the pure stuff they have you have to go with one of those two. And I also think it, it bigger picture. What the Braves are building what they're about homegrown talent if I'm going to make it to the division series I'm going to hand it to a guy that has kind of come through my system not a guy I picked up late in spring training and kind of nickel and dimed my way into the starting rotation. The Braves did not expect a sub three ERA from Sanchez. His ERA had spiked up ever since leading the American League in that category in 2013. It was north of six last year. Sometimes when you face a guy like Annabelle Sanchez I faced him in the prime of his career where, where he was really nasty and could could spot up that heater at 92 to 95 miles an hour. But when he's sitting in that 89 to 91 mile an hour range and FP you can attest to this everything looks hit or hittable 
and you start coming outside your zone instead of just pinpointing on one quad quadrant what your strength is. And there, like Soto, gets that little breaking ball over the heart of the plate and doesn't put great wood on it. 3-1 is driven to center field. Enciarte trekking back, and he's got plenty of space. That's not the part of the park you want to send the baseball to. Plenty of room out there in deep center. And Rendon is retired. So after one inning, no score between the Braves and the Nationals. And let's set up the social media scene from this past week. Hey, Trevor, what's up? Show me your step back. Show me your step back. Oh, oh, oh! Show me your step back. No, no, no. <laughs> Show me your step back. Oh, crossing the answer. The answer. <laughs> hey, bro, you thirsty? Crash. 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 All right, then. You're on home plate, Crash. Move. Well. Come on, boys. There you go. Go ahead. I got you. All right. Have a good evening. You know the fun part about being a dad? Changing poopy diapers. Changing that. Want to see Russ? Want to see our catcher? Hey, Russ, up real quick. hey how's it going, buddy? Hey. Nice <laughs> to meet you. I'll see you later. Enjoy the game, okay? See you, mate. Is that not the ultimate ballpark experience for a youngster? Wow. He can remember that the rest of his life. That was cool. <laughs> Here comes Nick Marcakis, cleanup hitter for Atlanta. Is Eric Burns going to make it? Nope. <laughs> Nope. He's trekking all the way across the country, is <laughs> yes, it? Yes, he is. Wow. He's of course he'll make it. Forrest Gump on a bike. We all know him well. Most energetic person I've ever met in my life. Oh, yeah. Now the most stoic player in the game. And an all-star for Nick the first Marcakis. time this season. Do yourself a favor and and put his name in the baseball reference page. I, I don't think people realize. I mean, he burst on the scene this year with his first All-Star game appearance, but this is a guy that's played north of 150 games multiple years in the big leagues, goes to the post. He's got over 2,000 hits. He was the seventh overall pick when he came out in the draft. Just kind of that lunch pail mentality. Jerome just said Markakis MVP. Question mark. Well, if you're going to throw Freddie Freeman's name in there, which, which you're rightfully going to do, you have to, you have to put Nick Marcake in. And that is shipped to right field. Plenty of distance. Ooh. Nick Markakis muscles up for a solo home run. It's 1-0 Atlanta. His 14th home run of the season. No doubt about it. Listen, it's easy up here in the booth. But here's a perfect example. The Nats are playing for their lives. Six games back. It's a 2-0 pitch to a guy who's having a career year. I mean, that's a middle cut cookie to one of the best hitters in the game right now. That ball's going to end up off the facade probably seven out of ten times. His power has ticked up. It matches his most home runs since 2011. And we still have about 50 games left in the season. Now Kurt Suzuki takes the first pitch away from Gonzalez. It's a pretty swing too, wasn't it? And most left-handed swings are, but that's extra right. pretty. <laughs> and Suzuki in the air. It's Eaton under it. One away. As much as we talk about the youth of the Atlanta Braves, we just saw a 34-year-old Nick Markakis with a home run, and that's 34-year-old Kurt Suzuki flying out to right field. So they do mix in some veteran experience, and even more so with some of the trades they made, like Johnny Venters in the bullpen and Brad Brock added as well. 
I think you had a, you have to have that nice blend. You can't ask the manager. Listen, he's going to police the clubhouse, but he. I played for a lot of managers that don't even like to walk through the clubhouse to try and give that to the players. So you need that veteran presence to kind of be able to take guys under their wing and show them how to be professionals and show them how to develop a routine and, and a consistent routine. 162 games is, is, is nothing to shake a stick at. You got you got to grind. You got to grind through it. And you think about the best teams that you and I played on. It was a mix of that. You had yeah. the young guys that were following around the old guys. And it's not so much how to do it on the field. It's in the clubhouse, off the field, away from the ballpark, how you, you know, conduct your, yourself, yeah. handle media. They also have a very valuable utility player in Charlie Culberson. It's tough to sit him right now, especially against the Nationals. This was his home run yesterday, the third of this series. Last six games played for him against Washington, he's produced five home runs. Yeah, Charlie Charlie has been an awesome utility player, and he's had some big moments in his career already. I know he doesn't get much run, but this is a guy I ran into in the San Francisco Giants organization and then to see him have that walk off moment for the Dodgers Vince Scully's last call where they clinched the NL West. He comes over in the Matt Kemp deal and he has been awesome for this team. But that was the situation last night bat and eighth pitcher on deck big spot Nationals are down. Oh two you pitch. have to play these games. I know there's 50 plus games left. You have to play them different. Hit that home run off an 0 2 pitch yesterday and fouls that one off to stay alive at 3 and 2. That was a three run home run to the Atlanta bullpen in the top of the third inning in yesterday's contest. And it put Atlanta up 3 1, and that's all they needed. Scott, you glossed over the fact that he's got five home runs against the Nets. He's got eight all year. <laughs> five are against the Nets. You talk about a Nat killer. This guy's absolutely crushed the Nationals. He needs to be in the lineup every day against this team. Man down. Culberson is four for nine in this series, three home runs and five runs batted in. Another 3 2 to center field, and that's going to drop. Base hit Charlie Culberson. He continues to crush the Nationals. Yeah, nice piece of hit, and he doubled up on the changeup. He went to it 2 2. Then he tried to go heater in. Charlie Culberson fouled that off. He went right back to the changeup. Just not a nice piece of hitting right there up the middle. Ender in Ciarte, who's been sitting often against left handed pitching, but he did not start in yesterday's game. Part of why Brian Snicker puts him in the lineup today, his 11 for 25 career mark against the starting pitcher. And part of the reason no other Braves are wearing eye black is because he's got it all on. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in one pitch, and that scorched right into the glove of Daniel Murphy. Heads up, two outs. You know, Murph has played a solid second base for the Nats since he's been here. You remember him as a New York Met. He was playing third, he was playing second, he was playing first. They were moving him all over the place. This year, coming off the microfracture surgery, not as effective as he was the last couple of years, but his defense as a Nat has been way better than anybody around here expected. Eight hitter Dansby Swanson. This second inning started with a Nick Markakis home run, the difference in the ball game. And then two batters later, Charlie Culberson base hit. Wait, didn't this guy just hit? <laughs> Does he not look <laughs> exactly right. like Culberson? Are they hitting out of order? Chime in from the comment section. Culberson and Swanson. Tim Campbell said Brian Snicker manager of the year. He's got to be on the list. 
That's an interesting call right there. We'll talk to Brian Snitker later. Many guests joining us soon, including Tanner Roark and Kevin Gossman of the Atlanta Braves, one of their new members, and also the Nationals manager, Davey Martinez. Any overachieving team, so the Philadelphia uh, yeah, Phillies and Gabe, Gabe Kapler. Kapler. After the start he had to the beginning of the year, the first week of the season, everyone was calling for uh, a potential replacement. He's righted the ship, and he has them in, in first place in the NL East. A half game better than Atlanta entering the day. And there is Brian Snicker, his first manager gig a few years ago, taking over for Freddy Gonzalez in May of 2016 at age 60. Downstairs and Dansby Swanson works a walk. It'll push Culberson to second. And Snit, Brian Snicker has the respect of everybody in that clubhouse. You can tell those guys love playing for him. I, I came up through the Braves organization and every player that in the last 30, 30 plus years that has come through that organization has played for Brian Snicker. He has uh, kind of got that father figure mentality to him. He's easy to talk to. Um, relatable gets the young guys understands the old school and the new school so he's been a he's been a perfect match for the Braves Sanchez looking for his first hit of this season goes after the first pitch we talk about this last night I think he's the most underrated manager in the big leagues and maybe from people outside of Atlanta that don't get to see this team play every day he runs a great game his yep. guys play hard he has them ready to play every day he's always got the right guy up that's available on that day in the bullpen but watching him over the last couple of years I think he runs a nice game. And in talking to him throughout the course of the year he said uh, the, the new regime Alex Anthopoulos Perry Manazzi and some of the newer uh, front office that came in from from L.A. brought a lot of analytics mostly defensively that have really helped him out. Where to position Markakis, where to position Swanson, shifts, where to put guys in the right spot, how, how to get the most out of certain players. So uh, I, I think it's been a nice, a nice blend for the both of them. 0-2, oh, we'll see if Gio Gonzalez can get rid of Anibal Sanchez in three pitches. He does, goes with the breaker and picks up his first strikeout of the day. But Nick Markakis leads off the top of the second inning with an absolute smash. Pulled to right field. It's his 14th home run of the season. And it puts Atlanta up 1-0 as we head to the home half of the second inning here at Nationals Park. A day game, MLB Live on Facebook Watch. Scott Braun, Mark DeRosa, F.P. Santangelo. And Anibal Sanchez with the lead. We'll see him working in the bottom of the second inning. And I like what Walt Weiss told us, bench coach for the Atlanta Braves. He said this morning he has plus-plus feel. Yeah, he and what that means, he kind of can read the hitter very well. FP can attest to that. He knows the guys that are going to be over aggressive. There's my old mentor, Walter Weiss. He can get it done and don't even think about testing him. He knows that like ultimate fighting stuff and put you <laughs> in a pretzel in a nanosecond. But Annabelle's able to his his fastball I said earlier plays faster and what I mean by that is you see so much s slow stuff he'll, he'll sometimes throw this butterfly pitch that he almost you can consider it an Ephus where he'll nickel and dime you with some breaking stuff and some good feel for a changeup and then when that 91 kind of plays 95 and the ability to dot up how do you face a guy like this what's your game plan do you sit soft do you sit in a zone how, how do you hit against him well right here and, and we'll look at it 2014 through 2017 first right handed pitching not so good kind of missing over the heart of the plate look at him down and away so what does that tell me FP he, he he's dotting down and away he's not so much concerned about in I'd have to tip my hat if he punched me out on a pitch in I'm leaning out over the plate on this guy I'm eliminating full side easier said than done but it's going to keep me on the off speed stuff and in today's game I know I can rush a ball to right center for damage so why would I try and cheat maybe if I get in count leverage 1 0 2 0 3 1 I might take a flyer and, and try and pull something in the seats but for the most part this graphic is showing you 
He is not missing over the heart of the plate to a lot of right handed. Hitters. Do you get on the plate more? Do you change? I never moved. Me neither. I never moved in the box 14 years I played. Never. I mean, same. That's a mis I, I think it's a mistake. If I could go back and do it, I think I would play the game a little bit more freer. But we were, we couldn't, we couldn't play the game like these kids. We were playing a different game. Right, wrong, or indifferent. We had to move runners. We, we didn't know that getting a bunt down was a bad thing and giving up outs was a was a bad thing. So we played a different uh, a different style of baseball. I think this I mean who wouldn't want to play like this. I felt like if I moved on the plate the catcher would notice and then they'd pound me in. <laughs> Daniel Murphy to third and Culberson makes the play. There's one away on one pitch the 20th of the afternoon from Sanchez. Actually had a question. How we, how we doing fan interaction? Yeah. Well, Corey said with Dansby Swanson struggling at the plate and Culberson producing, do you see Camargo going to short and Culberson playing third? That's what we saw yesterday. They it's tough to sit Charlie Culberson right now. Hey, Charlie Culberson was your starting shortstop in the NLCS for the Dodgers last year when Corey Seager went down. So you can have it any way you want it there. But yeah, I, I don't think, I think Dansby's the one guy that kind of, I think Atlanta is still trying to figure out in my opinion still trying to figure out is is he their everyday shortstop for the next 10 years. I don't know if that that's been completely answered. He, he's obviously shown glimpses of it. But I don't know if, if, if that's a you look at Ozzy Albies and you can deal with the peaks and valleys and, and you would say yeah he's not moving. We're going to see him for a long time. Acuna Junior same thing. And there's some other guys coming through the minor leagues but. I think Dan's, Dansby's got to assert himself a little bit more offensively. And that's what Braves fans think of like Steve Britt said Braves haven't had a fun young duo in the dugout like Albies and Acuna since Andrew Jones and Chipper Jones and loving the energy and Zimmerman is retired on an 0 2 pitch. And there are the two as one <laughs> fan put it cousins. <laughs> I would say more like brothers. Culberson and Swanson. I'm serious. I don't know which one's which. Swanson <laughs> on the right, hey. Culberson on the left, but it's difficult. They're both good looking. So let's get that out there. They have the same facial hair, the same lettuce on the back. Everything's the same. Don't they sign each other's autographs? <laughs> Somebody said something about that. I buy it. This is Michael A. Taylor. Center fielder today. No Bryce Harper in the lineup if you're just joining us. Hit on the right shin last night. Out of the lineup today, but a day to day injury for him. So coming up at the end of this second inning, new member of the starting rotation, Kevin Gossman. Comes over from the Baltimore Orioles in a trade to the Atlanta Braves and he will join us after this second inning and we'll carry that into the top of the third. Any questions you have for Kevin Gossman let us know in the comments section and I'll take a bunch of them and ask them directly to Kevin during the game and that is back to Sanchez the comebacker he'll make the play three ground ball outs here in the bottom of the seventh took him just seven pitches to pull it off after two innings Atlanta with a one nothing lead. Thanks to Nick Markakis with his 14th home run of the season in the top of the frame. MLB Live on Facebook Watch Scott Braun, Mark DeRosa, and FP Santangelo. And I think this was the line of the week when the Braves acquired these players because you'll notice that three of them come from the Baltimore Orioles. Kevin Gossman said they're calling it. Baltimore South in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> what I love, you look to, you start on your left. Johnny Venters, born and raised in the Atlanta Braves organization, makes his home there. So for him to come back, feel good story. Brad Brock shores, shores up a young bullpen. Same with Darren O'Day if he's able to get healthy. The other two guys, Adam Duvall, 30 plus bombs multiple times for the Cincinnati Reds. So I think they're both upside plays. Kevin Gosman was the fourth overall pick in the draft out of LSU. And I think in today's day and age, if you get picked that high, you just need that one coach to unlock you. And this might be a huge upside play for them. Hello, everyone. 
watching around the globe. Here we are. Yes. Thank we, you, we FP. We are high up here, by yeah. the way. Well, FP, this is your spot. This is your home. Yes, we are. They're watching around the globe, but we're watching the globe. And we're FP, so high. being here in 2012, none of these buildings. I walked to the st to the yard today, and it's like this place has exploded in the last five years. You know what nobody talks about, and I really haven't talked about it, how the ball travels here when it's warm? It's because all these buildings now are blocking any blocking sort of breeze. That, I mean, back in the day, the, the wind used to come down half street, and now it does it with all these buildings. So this has turned into a hitter's ballpark. Well, let's talk to Kevin Gossman, Atlanta Braves starting pitcher, joining us right now on MLB Live on Facebook Watch to watch the top of the third inning with us. Kevin, how are you today? Thanks for hopping on. I'm good, yeah. Thanks for having me. So we were just saying how, was it your line or did you hear the line from someone else when you come across with Brad Brock and Darren O'Day, it's Baltimore South in Atlanta. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, I heard, just heard that from a couple other guys. And uh, yeah, you know, we got a ton of guys that, um, we you know, we're, we're part of some really good teams in Baltimore. So, uh, you know, I think uh, Darren O'Day, obviously, he's pitched in a couple World Series too uh, before joining the Orioles. So, you know, it kind of brings in that, uh, that veteran factor out there. So we have a question coming in about the difference in clubhouses between Baltimore and Atlanta. What have you observed so far? Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing I've noticed so far is uh, just the youth of this team. You know, how many uh, how many young guys they have on here and just a lot of, uh, you know, talented young players that you just kind of let go out there and, and play the game. And uh, it, it's been fun to, to watch. And, you know, my first game here, uh, Acuna had a leadoff triple, and, and we stole four bases before, you know, the third inning. So, uh, you know, it's those types of things that you notice, you know, big difference between uh, the American League East. Yeah, another big difference is you pinch hitting on Tuesday. Tell me about <laughs> that. Did you get ambushed? There's no way you took practice swings, but you went up there and threw a good A-B out there. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm used to laughing when a coach comes and tells me that. Uh, so it was, it was a little bit different. Um, you know, I noticed that that Walt was serious when he told me. So, um, you know, get your heart bumping. Uh, it kind of reminded me of pitching out of the bullpen. You know, that phone rings and, and uh, someone tells you to get going real quick. You know, I went up there with my left shoe not tied as tight as my right and, and that type of thing. But, um, you know, once you get in there, it's just about competing. And, and luckily he, uh, you know, he didn't throw me very many strikes. So, I, you know, I was able to get on base. Acuna Jr. lined out to Trey Turner. Now the first pitch, Ozzy Albies. Takes a hack and sends it to left field. Juan Soto puts him away. Hey, Kevin, Mark DeRosa here. I want to ask you, A, did you know kind of you were going to get dealt, and B, were you shocked it was the Atlanta Braves? Kind of take me through the, the day of getting that call. Yeah, you know, I think um, this was the first year where it, uh, it really kind of gained some momentum um, the days leading up. And so, uh, you know, in past years, um, I'd heard my name, but um, nothing really came to fruition, you know. So, um, you know, when, when I knew it was really serious was, you know, when I got some texts from my agent the day of that kind of said, hey, this is progressing. Uh, there might be might be something done today. And uh, that's when I kind of had to get prepared. It was a little weird. I was scheduled to throw a bullpen. And so I was getting ready for my bullpen, you know, not knowing if uh, I was going to actually throw it or not. And so, uh, you know, it was it was it was a little weird. But, you know, um, just, you know, to, to be here in Atlanta, um, you know, it, it's been exciting. Obviously, uh, they're great. They're playing great baseball, and you know, you just try to uh, come in and bring what you bring. That's a double with two outs. Freddie Freeman planted at second base and hustling for two and getting in there. We're talking to Kevin Gossman. We'll mix in a few more questions, and this one coming from Mike Mitchell. Have the Braves suggested you do anything with your pitch mix, location, or sequencing? Yeah, you know, when I first came over, um, I had a great talk with with Alex and uh, and Dave Wallace, and and you know, they just kind of um, brought brought some some uh, information to me about you know really the last year and a half and kind of what I got away from doing, and uh, you know, for whatever reason, I was I was getting further towards the first base side, and um, you know, they kind of said that that maybe had something to do with you know a little bit of my spin rate going down on my fastball, and and. Uh, you know it, it not playing up as much and so um, you know I think one of the biggest things they they said to me was you know hey we we believe that you're you're a guy that can pitch up in the zone 
uh, effectively and, and uh, with two strikes and, and early and often. And so, um, you know, and I know when, when I'm going good, I'm able to do that and, and my split plays off of it and, and my slider as well. So, um, you know, it, it it's, uh, you know, it's great when you have two catchers like, like these guys that come in and they're very well prepared and, you know, Flowers is, is unreal back there and, and Zook is really good too. So, you know, when you have guys like that, it makes uh, the transition pretty easy. Hey, Kevin, how, how awesome has it been for you to come over here and to get back with your old teammate and watch the season Nick Marcakis is having? Yeah, yeah, it's been great, um, you know, to be able to, to watch him play and, you know, be able to be an all-star this year for the first time. And, and that's pretty crazy because, you know, watching him play every day in Baltimore for a couple of years that, that I was able to, do that um, you know I don't think you get a feel for how good he is until you watch him play every day yeah. and uh, you know he's, he's the type of guy that every single at bat he's locked into and uh, makes the pitcher work fouls pitches off and and you know always comes up big in, in big situations and uh, you know he's not a guy that's going to get too big with his swing and and uh, never really looks like he gets fooled too much so uh, you know and I, I think that's just because he's, he's been around so long and um, you know he has a great approach up there. 2-2 to Nick Barcakis is shipped to right field. It's a base hit, and Just Freddie like Freeman is coming in. That throw is money, though, from right field. Adam Eaton gets him. And the tag placed on by Matt Wieters. Kevin, we'll let you go real quick from Mitch. He wants to know if you're still eating powdered donuts between every inning. <laughs> No, not anymore. I wish. <laughs> I wish I could do that. I'm getting a little bit older. I can't be doing that anymore. Amazing. Thank you so much, Kevin. Good luck the rest of the season, okay? Yeah, thank you, guys. Great play from Adam Eaton on one hop for Matt Wieters. Perfect placement. And Freddie Freeman is toast. I'm sitting up here wondering, do you walk a lefty with first base open <laughs> that's leading Major League Baseball in hits? To get to a righty, do you like the left-on-left -left matchup, or would you rather go for Kurt Suzuki? And then Nick Markakis gets the base hit. The guy can rake, and then Adam Eaton with a good throw. Good turn by Freddie Freeman at third. It was just a perfect throw and tag. I remember when Adam Eaton was still a White Sox, and he moved to right field, and his defensive metrics went through the roof. I think you could argue he was one of the best. He was might have been the best defensive right fielder in the game for a stretch there in the American League. So to see him go over here. But the he just hasn't been healthy. He just haven't seen the best of Adam Eaton. When he's on the field, he creates problems defensively, off offensively, and we just look. I, I think back to that trade being on the desk when they traded the three pitchers: Giolito, Ronaldo Lopez, Dane Dunning, another top prospect. For Adam Eaton, everyone was blown away. But I think kind of like Nick Markakis. to see Adam Eaton, you can attest to this, see him play every day, a healthy Adam Eaton. He causes problems. He does, and he's throwing better now because his legs are underneath him. Early on when he came back, he didn't have that leverage to throw with, and his arm wasn't as strong. That's a testament to how he's feeling by making a great throw right on the money. Anibal Sanchez not feeling well after the comebacker hits him. He made the last play of the bottom of the second inning and removed from the game. Wes Parsons replaces him, and he'll have some long work to do he takes over in the third inning the 25 year old rookie six foot five out of Clarksville Tennessee and in the minor leagues this year a 247 ERA in 20 appearances this is just his work on the screen in double A with Mississippi a one two three mark so he's been awesome in the minor league level now he'll get a major league test against the divisional opponent check out the play again Michael A Taylor with a one hopper where to get him in the left calf. Remember Max Freed in the first game of the series only yep. lasted two innings. Now the Nats knock another brave starter out early on a comebacker. And this will be the major league debut for Wes Parsons. Emergency duty in the third inning. Anibal Sanchez was rolling just a base hit given up to Trey Turner. He had retired five in a row. You're up, you wonder if Wes Parsons can feel his legs right now. <laughs> Sometimes not knowing that you're going in and just being in the just middle, you, you just don't even know where you're at right now. He'll face Matt Wieters, then Gio Gonzalez, and back to the top of the order in Adam Eaton after that. Well, there's a famous story about a young player on the Montreal Expos who was told to get to the ballpark early and ends up 
about, what, eight hours early to the park, FP, for your Major League debut, and Weeder sends that to right field. Markakis puts him away. There's one out. Got there at noon for a 7.30 start, and the clubhouse was closed. <laughs> <laughs> they had to call Bill Stoneman, who was the GM and president of the ball club, down to open the clubhouse, and he said, don't you think you're a little early? I said, man, I've been waiting my whole life for this. There's no <laughs> such thing as early. And I got there, my jersey was hanging up, and Felipe Alou put me in the lineup that night because I got there so early. I went two for three and stayed there for seven there years. You go. So all you kids, when you get called up, get there eight hours early. <laughs> You'll play the first night. You won't sit around <laughs> and be intimidated by the third deck. Here's Gio Gonzalez. And we will talk to his manager, Dave Martinez. First year with the Washington Nationals. We'll take your questions now and relay a few of them to the manager during the game here on MLB Live on Facebook Watch. Big hack from Gonzalez. I think it's one and one. I think an interesting note was just put in my ear by Keith Costas, researcher extraordinaire. He said Wes Parsons actually in junior college stepped away from baseball to focus on golf for a minute and then came back. Bad bunker play. He had to get back <laughs> out on the mound. Undrafted apropos. out of Jackson State Community College and signed with the Braves in 2012. Oh, yeah. Apropos with the last major getting well, ready to off the first big league hit he gives up is to the opposing pitcher that's Gio Gonzalez and he's aboard for the Nationals with one away that here in the count. bottom of the third that doesn't count <laughs> why not totally caught it's a belt tie fastball tell that story can't tell the story that's like David Ross David Ross's first home run in the big leagues was against Mark Grace mopping up a position player you can't tell that story <laughs> well by the time he's my age it'll be you know Bryce Harper <laughs> Got the first hit off me. No one's going to know the difference. Ooh. And that's off the pitcher. And ricochets into left field. Adam Eaton has himself a base hit. And we'll see if Wes Parsons is OK. This just happened to Sanchez. Dangerous spot to be on the mound this afternoon. And here comes some personnel to take a look. Where did that get him? Ankle? Inside of his left foot, it appears. Wow. Right on the cleat. And this is the stuff if you're a manager, Brian Snicker, you can't prepare for. The Braves, they have a young bullpen. At one point, Walt Weiss said what? They had seven rookies in the bullpen at one point? And, and guys who have had some debilitating injuries. So he's trying to protect a bullpen, trying to get length out of his starters. Annabelle goes down with getting hit in the calf. Hopefully Wes Parsons is OK and can gut it out and give him some more. He'll test it out. You, he's staying in this game unless Brian Snicker carries him off. This is your debut mentally you're not feeling much and you're on adrenaline right now. It's a good point. He was up on the Major League uh, roster briefly at the beginning of this month, but did not make an appearance. He's actually sent back down the same day. Here he is again as the Braves placed two pitchers on the disabled list in game one of this series back on Tuesday. Relief pitcher Shane Carl hits the DL, and so does Max Fried, injured in Tuesday's game. And now Trey Turner with two aboard for the Nationals. This is a big, it's a big pitch right here. Big A B for Trey Turner. Nats day game coming off a bad loss last night. There's a malaise over this team right now. This is a big pitch. He needs to rifle something in the gap or work it to 3 0 and get Juan Soto up with the bases loaded. 2 0 misses low and a nice stop by Suzuki. I just saw Zach ask where Bryce Harper is. If you're just joining us, he's out of the lineup today. Hit by a pitch on his shin yesterday. Green light here? Absolutely not. No? <laughs> Comment below quickly. Green light on 3 0? Absolutely not. Trey Turner, <laughs> ball four. No. He grounds into a double play there. I uh, oh, couldn't live with myself. 
Well, I mean, for Davy Martinez, this is the right man, the right spot. And with those misses right there, you, you have to wonder if you're Brian Snicker how that ankle's feeling because he wasn't close with any of those pitches. Is his landing ankle or his push off? I forget where it is. I feel like it was. His, I feel like it's his push off. It is. No one warming up. No no stirring. I mean, he hasn't been yeah, close. Don't. This is where you get really greedy in the strike zone. 1 0 bases load. It's got to be middle cut. And you know Juan Soto will wait for his pitch. If you've seen the work that he's done this season, he takes ball two. Plate discipline is plus for him. He's 19 years old, youngest player in the sport, and one of the most productive hitters in the sport since he made his debut. Green light? No. <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask you. I mean, you're rumored in every managerial job <laughs> around the world every year, so I, I just want to see how you'd manage. I don't know. <laughs> I just got to. I <laughs> hope he's not swinging right here. And the 3-0 is delivered at the bottom of the zone for a strike. It's 3-1. and one. Also, we just received official word about Sanchez. He exited with a left calf contusion. And now a full count to Soto. Nationals manager Davey Martinez joining us at the end of this third inning. Any questions you have for the Nats manager, let us know now. And that misses to Soto. Ball four. It's 1-1. One, one. RBI walk for the 19 year old rookie. You're going to see somebody getting up in the Braves pen. That's a quality AB right there. I, I, I know we went 3 0, but a 19 year old base is loaded with a lot on the line with 50 plus games hunting down an NL East title. Sometimes you come outside the zone. He didn't, he didn't right there. We saw him, I think it might have been his first game as a Nat. He went deep his first at bat, and then he came up late in the game in maybe the bottom of the ninth. And we're thinking he's going to hit another one. And 19 years old, he spit on pitches and took a walk. There's no <laughs> way you and I at 19 no way. in a big situation in the ninth inning would have even taken one pitch, let alone walk. And that's when you knew he had a good knowledge of the strike zone and he was mature beyond his years. Gio Gonzalez walked in to score the first run of the day for Washington. And now Anthony Rendon with the bases loaded and just one away here in the bottom of the third. A ton of trouble for Wes Parsons. So for Sanchez. He delivered six of seven first pitch strikes to the batters he faced. The rookie Parsons has fallen behind to four of five hitters. And that first pitch is socked to deep left center field. Oh, he knows Acuna it. Jr. looking Whoa. leaps up and has it. A run's going to score, so the sacrifice fly for Anthony Rendon puts the Nationals up 2-1, to one, but it could have been much worse on the Braves' rookie's account. Fool me, I thought that was a grand slam. You saw the body language from up here. Anthony Rendon knew he had just missed it just a smidge. Yeah, didn't rob one like he did last night. But a nice play, and Rendon will settle for the sack fly, and so will Parsons. It scores Eaton. It's 2-1 to one Nationals. And here's Daniel Murphy. That baseball looks like it died a little bit compared to game one of the series on Tuesday. That ball was traveling to left center field. A little crosswind going, see the flags rolling from left field to right field. Maybe that had something to do with it. Murphy lays off the 0-1. Only the 45th game played this season by Daniel Murphy. And I think people forget not having him, not having him healthy. When he signed, 
he, he was coming off that monumental postseason run with the New York Mets. And then we're all like, who is the real Daniel Murphy? He signs a three-year deal with the Washington Nationals and proceeds to look like Wade Boggs with power for the first two years of it. And then has the microfracture surgery. And then, like you said, with Adam Eaton trying to get his legs back under him. He's been in a groove since late July. That's to left. Sacuna Jr. All over it. So the Nationals grab the lead off the new pitcher, Wes Parsons. Gio Gonzalez with the base hit. And he would score on the bases loaded walk for Juan Soto to even it up at one apiece. A comebacker attacks Parsons. Control wasn't the same after that point. And some patient nationals, including Trey Turner with a walk, and then Soto as well. MLB Live on Facebook Watch. Scott Braun, Mark DeRosa, FP Santangelo, and joining us right now, Nationals manager Dave Martinez. Dave, thanks for joining us for a moment. Let's start uh, with a question from Guy on Facebook. He said, what did you learn from Joe Madden when you were Cubs bench coach? Yeah, I learned how to process everything and be patient. I mean, that, those are the two things he taught me the, the best. Uh, as a former player, uh, you tend to, you know, get, games get speed up on you. So uh, as a coach, he always taught me, hey, to be patient and process everything. What did, did, he, you, did he tell you to be patient until, like, September 13th? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm looking to be patient till, till uh, November 1st. How's that? Sounds good. Hey, Davey. Are you blown away, like even in that situation right there, are you blown away by the, the consistent at-bats of a 19-year-old, bases loaded, big spot, willing to work the walk right there, Juan Soto? Absolutely. I mean, uh, hey, he's incredible. He really is. I mean, he's got good awareness of, of the strike zone. Uh, he pay, pays attention to detail, and he, do, you know, he plays the game. He does the little things, and uh, he's really fun to watch. Uh, you know, I really got to, to appreciate what he does on, on a daily basis, and his work ethic is incredible. Dave, last one. Who was the better center fielder in Montreal, Otis Nixon or Dave Martinez? <laughs> hey, or how about F.P. Santangelo? <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I'm going I'm, yeah, I'm to go on, on a limb right here and say Otis was pretty pretty good. He really was. Eddie. <laughs> hey, I wasn't bad, though. And F.P. Was, was right there with us. So uh, they had some pretty good ones. Dave, thank you so much for the time. Good luck the rest of the way here. All right, thank you. I left two knees on that turf. They're still up there. <laughs> You left two knees on St. Catherine Street. <laughs> you left your entire body up there. Like, yeah, we won't say what plays either. <laughs> Top of the fourth inning, Scott Braun, Mark DeRosa, and FP Santangelo, Dan Colco joining us soon. Yeah, where's Dan? Is he here? It's awesome. Doing a Facebook game with us. Dan has word on Gio Gonzalez very soon. He's facing Kurt Suzuki who flew out to right field first time up and he did not go around it's one and one. Braves have a nice catching tandem a veteran presence of Kurt Suzuki and Tyler Flowers both can jump ship Kurt Suzuki has seemed to have found uh, some type of power pole cord. We were teammates with the Nats 2012 he came over and was was a part of the team Kurt Suzuki but he's been a nice addition with the Atlanta Braves kind of helping the young pitching staff along to go with Tyler Flowers. Yeah I think Mike Rizzo's made a bunch of great moves since he's been the GM of the Nats but I think Kurt Suzuki's one of his best. Turns on one and Rendon puts him away. There's one down and let's bring in Dan Colco for more on Gio Gonzalez. Hey Dan. Hey Scott. Well I talked to Matt Wieters about Gio Gonzalez recently. What he thinks the biggest key is for the left hander on the mound. He said he wants Gio to keep a better tempo than he has over his last few starts. Keep him from overthinking things in between pitches. He, Weider says that Gio is one of the best pitchers he's ever caught when it comes to being able to self-correct, feeling when he did something wrong with his delivery and being able to make the adjustment to it. But when he's thinking about what he did wrong, Weider says things can get more complicated for him. So that's why Weider wants Gio keeping a good tempo. Doesn't want him getting too fast and messing with his mechanics, but wants him getting the ball and getting back on the mound quickly after a pitch. So we'll pay attention to the pace from Gio Gonzalez, and it looks good right now. Two strikes quickly on Charlie Culberson. Gio's a very excitable guy. We always used to have to tell him, hey, relax, slow down. 
execute pitch to pitch. He get he really gets emotional out on the mound. Sometimes it works in his favor and sometimes it could be disaster because when you're thinking that way you leave something over the harder to play to a guy like Nick Markakis and he throws it in the second deck. I, I, I think Gio just has to every pitch has to be with conviction and he has the ultimate teammate to go to in Max Scherzer if there's ever a guy who doesn't give away one pitch a game. It's Mad Max. Well, you have to be in the moment, and it has to be pitch by pitch. So if somebody made an error behind me, or I threw a th close 3-2 pitch that, that called ball four, you have to be able to turn the page exactly. and, and be present in this pitch and not worry about what just happened. I think sometimes Gio worries about a lot of things that have happened previously that maybe are out of his control, exactly. and it affects the pitch that's coming to the hitter at that moment. But a few starts ago, you guys, in Miami, he was as deliberate as I've ever seen him. He was coming set like Max Scherzer and just sitting there, and you could count the five. And, and he, he was too slow. And then Matt Weider said, hey, you can't go that slow. you got to speed it up a little bit. I think today's just right so far. You know, work quick, but don't be in a rush. Culberson has worked a full count after falling behind 0-2. Same situation, different time. He uh, His first at bat, 3-2 changeup right here. He's... I'm interested to see what he throws. Three two again another test for Rendon and that's the second out went right back to the changeup. Slick play. You don't see too many third basemen throw a sidearm. You know the further away you are from your target the more over the top you got to be. But Anthony Rendon has mastered the sidearm sling from third. Watch this off his heels sling it. Almost underhand, right on the money, with something on it. It's Cal Ripkinish. You know, you played a lot of third. When you go toward the bag at third, you got to come over yeah, the top, gotta, so the ball stays straight. It's a further throw than you realize. Always has his poker face on, Anthony Rendon. Davey Martinez told us this morning, even keel in the clubhouse every day. And Braves manager Brian Snitker is about to join us after the third out here in the top of the fourth. Any questions for Brian Snitker, let us know. And we'll send them over to him live here on MLB Live on Facebook Watch. And that includes at least one question on Anibal Sanchez and his status. If someone wants to ask something about that, we'll see what he thinks. There's Brian Snicker, also third base coach for the Braves from 2007 through 2013. Ender Inciarte on the ground for Trey Turner. And three ground ball outs for Gio Gonzalez. Nicely done here in the top of the fourth inning. The Nationals carrying a 2-1 lead into the last of the fourth here at Nationals Park. So postseason probability in the National League East. Do I like this stock market status? That's from the beginning of the season. The Nationals were way up there. And now here's where we currently stand on August 9th. The Phillies at 69%. Look at the Nationals, though, still at 43% at this point in the season. And the Atlanta Braves at 39%. I bet we are going to receive some angry comments. I'm saying FP, <laughs> FP, that's why you look at that. Yeah. Even, even the probabilities are thinking the team's going to get hot at some point. And that is according to fan graphs. Postseason probability, the Nationals at 43 you know what's frustrating? You know what's frustrating? Walking through the Nats clubhouse today and seeing Steven Strasburg and six foot six dominator on the mound. He's got, we got to get him back. He's got to get on that mound for this team. Well, let's talk to Atlanta Braves manager Brian Snit for, for about a minute. Brian, thank you for joining us. Okay. And let's start with Anibal Sanchez. How is he after being removed from the game after two innings? Well, it popped him in the calf pretty good, and he's having a hard time walking around down there, so we'll find out. Snit, is there a magnet on the mound? Wes Parsons takes one off the foot as well? Yeah, I know. That's just what we need to. I, wa <laughs> I, I want to ask you, Snit, I want to ask you about managing a guy like Nick Markakis <laughs> and he doesn't get the national exposure at least this year he made his first all-star team but just kind of his every day 
what what is he like in the clubhouse? He's outstanding. I've told a lot of people, it's like you don't ever appreciate a guy like Nick until you manage him. Um, you see him on the peripheral and, and solid player, but how this guy goes about it. I, I, he's a machine, um, prepares every day. Every day's the same. There's no highs and lows. Um, it, it's unbelievable physically, mentally, how he, what he brings every day is just remarkable to me. Brian, thank you so much for the time. Good luck the rest of the way here. Thanks, guys. Braves manager Brian Snicker, there was a good one that came in at the last second from Scotty Smith saying, how do you find space to let Charlie Culberson play every day? I can partially answer that based on post-game comments because Charlie has been playing so well for Atlanta starting at third base today. He did still mention that he is in that utility role. Johan Camargo is the regular third baseman just getting a day off. Well, sometimes and you got two utility players yeah, up here. You get overexposed. Say. And what does that mean? Well, now the scouts start bearing down on you. The game plan is more intense and you can get away with playing two or three times a week and get your knocks and do damage. But if you start playing seven days a week, you know, now they, they, they find your holes, you're exposed and you have to adjust more. So he's right in his wheelhouse right now. Play a little bit, do some damage, sit next to the skipper for a couple minutes, then go out there again and do it maybe on Thursday. I mean, it's perfect the way they're using him. You don't want to overuse him. Ryan Zimmerman, the one two, he goes after it. And the strikeout for Wes Parsons. I agree with FP. Being a guy that bounced around my entire career, there was excitement in the fact that I bounced around. I felt I felt like I got stale playing one position. And I didn't necessarily think I had one position. I played outstanding enough to warrant holding that one spot. I felt like the excitement was the fact that I could nickel and dime the outfield for a day or two, play a little short second, maybe moonlight at first base, and it kind of kept kept me involved offensively you, you, you do what you can you grind it as much as you can you come up with a game plan but I felt like it helped me on the defensive side this is Michael A. Taylor and a drive to deep left field Michael A. Taylor muscles up for the solo home run it's three to one Nationals a lot of loft on that baseball for his sixth home run of the season That's a big boy, Homer. You know, you talk about a guy that would play every day for a lot of ball clubs. Michael A. Taylor's got tremendous talent. He's as good a defender in center field as there is in baseball. And then the sneaky pop right here. Look where that thing's hanging. Oof. Bell tie right out over the plate. Here's real speed. Watch how far the Michael A. Taylor goes. A hanging slider, didn't it? Yeah. And now Matt Wieters, who flew out to right field in his first trip to the plate in the bottom of the third. Three consecutive misses from Parsons. Do the nerves go away in your Major League debut or do they last for the whole outing for the rookie today? For me, it was so quick. I mean, my first at bat was against Randy Johnson. I pinch hit. It was like uh, I didn't even feel my body. So. Yeah, I'm sure after after he got dinged off the foot or the calf right there, he kind of I think emotionally settled in. And by the way, Sky, playing 14 years in the big leagues, I, I don't think the nerves ever truly go away. Every game you have a pit in your stomach. And then when you walk through the clubhouse door and you see your name in the lineup, you have a bigger pit in your stomach. <laughs> And if you don't, you relax a little bit. And how I knew the end was near is I was rooting for my name to be in the extra list and not in the starting lineup, and I knew the end was near. And then if I was starting, I would say, oh, no. I got to play today? This stinks. Weeders popped out to short, and Gio Gonzalez came through with a base hit. Back in the third inning, Gio got him going. It began the rally two runs for the Nationals in the third and now one more here in the fourth. Trying to even up this series. The last of four games here at Nationals Park 
between the Braves and the Nats. And that included a doubleheader on Tuesday, which was split, and then the Braves took yesterday's game 8 3. Parsons ahead 1 2, and wastes one. Yeah, I just think for the Nats going to Chicago after today's game, a happy flight. The yeah, Debro can attest to this. Getaway day wins always seem bigger to me because you're with your teammates the rest of the day on a plane in a hotel on a bus and sometimes the momentum you get on a getaway day win can translate to the next a day. absolutely the whole, the whole dynamic of the plane is different the bus ride to the airport's completely different you see the uh, the coaches the manager they got smiles on their face everybody's grabbing a grabbing a drink a glass of wine and you can relax a little bit and unwind they lose this ball game you start panicking you're here in the national media you know how many games you're out and it makes for a for a lengthy and quiet flight. Two strikeouts for Parsons. He gets Gio Gonzalez. A little bit of control problems at the moment. Pat Blakely pointing that out. No control on the mound. Well, Michael Taylor's just got a short stroke, huh? Quick through the zone, just a hanging either cutter or slider, middle of the plate. And he didn't miss it. That was a big, that was a long one. Home run number six on the season for Michael A. Taylor. Which team concerns you more in the National League East race? This is in the Braves fan group right now. If you join that fan page on Facebook and Braves fans are much more frightened by a young Philadelphia Phillies team and I say young besides their top two starting yeah. pitchers. Aaron Nola has been in the league for several seasons and Jake Arrieta is playoff race tested. He is October tested so he is not going to back down or wear out. Do you agree, both of you? I would, I, I, I would agree with that, just because of the six-game advantage and the fact that the Nats and and the Phillies are going to play each other nine more times and kind of beat up, beat up on each other. The reason, listen, if the Atlanta Braves, they certainly have the roster and capability of going on a run and winning a World Series. They do, they do have that. But what I love about them is. They could have done monumental things at the deadline. They could have given up monumental prospects. They got one of the best farm systems in all of baseball, if not the best. If they wanted an archer, if they wanted a DeGrom, if they wanted to go after whoever to come in and really cement this race in the NL East, I think they could have done it. I just look at a team that is just a steam engine coming down the track for the next couple years. And I don't think Alex wanted to do anything to kind of disrupt that. So what do you do? You, you, you take an upside play in Kevin Gosman and hopefully the 97 and with Chuck Hernandez and some of the analytics he turns into a beast to go with Julio Tehran and Fulton Avich and Sean Newcomb and maybe a Kyle Wright, a Tuki Toussaint, some of the other minor leaguers coming up through the zone. So I think they saved their future and also gave themselves an honest chance to win the NL East. So it's that's why I say they're playing with house money when I look at when I look at the Atlanta Braves this year. And you kind of have to agree with the Braves chat room right now. The Braves are nine and six against the Nats this year. They've, they've played well against them and the numbers are the numbers. My only contention would be that how do the young players in Philadelphia handle a pennant race when things start to get hot in September. Yeah. How do the younger players for the Braves handle that. The Nats have been there and done it and I how think does that, Gabe Kapler handle that. It's a great point. But you have a team that's won four of the last six divisions that maybe will handle a pennant race in September better than the other two teams. That said, the numbers are the numbers, and those are hard to argue with right now. That's fouled off by Dansby Swanson. Thinking back to the Nationals, though, this this entire season, they haven't had that like galvanizing moment, that like walk off homer that everyone's going. I, at least I haven't seen it. I feel like I have where in multiple cases I I marked down Bryce for hit 215 team. for like four months. It's tough when your star is not. Well let me give you two examples because one of the things I like to do is mark down a signature win for each team throughout the season. I have had two written down for the Nationals. One of them was asked after a players only meeting where Max Scherzer addressed the team. They fell. 9 nothing to the Marlins early on came back and won that okay. game with Jeremy Hellickson on the mound. You're playing the Marlins. Also 
they beat up the with Mets with 23 respect. runs. Yes, those are two of the bottom level teams in the National League East. But FP, not, were those not signature W's? You did not say that with all due respect. Do <laughs> not try to backpedal from that. I'm just saying that uh, for me, if, if, if beating the Marlins is my galvanizing moment and Bryce Harper hit a uh, home run derby, winning the home run derby with a headband on is your galvanizing moment, then you haven't had one yet. Well, it, it's, but Scott saying that, I didn't jump on that bandwagon that day because I wanted to see what happened after. D do you take that and run off five in a row? Yeah. Do you use that momentum and go and it didn't happen? That's right. So then it isn't a galvanizing moment. And it isn't a turning point in the season. Was it in a vacuum an incredible victory when you're down nine to nothing you come back and all of a sudden you win it. What was it 14 to 10. Yeah. Yeah that was a tremendous game in a vacuum but did it kickstart them. Everybody wanted to say at the moment that this is the turning point. Exactly. You had to see, and it didn't. On the field, it's like the Bryce Harper home run experience was awesome. I was standing up on my couch cheering when he was hitting those bombs. The Mike Rizzo, Kinsler to the Cubs, Sean Kelly, DFA. Those are moments like where I tip my hat, but on the field, like when they're jumping around, going. I, I could think back to, to multiple times throughout the course of the 2012 season where it was just man it's just going our way you could sense that that was yeah, so organic you I still sense it still my favorite season here Gio Gonzalez in a groove right now he strikes out Parsons after the fly off from Swanson and he's retired five in a row he's playing without his teammate Bryce Harper today look where that pitch started and look where it ended up and he hit a spot the whole inning I don't know how that was taken in the clubhouses but as a former player I thought that was curious whenever a guy hits a home run and gets drilled with the very next pitch his next at bat you're just wondering it makes you wonder I don't know Freddie and Bryce were having a, a party at first after that so <laughs> I, I don't know pitch number 70 from Gio Gonzalez it's a breaking ball it misses to Ronald Acuna Jr. who is 0 for 2 today so let's ask that in the comments section what do you think of yesterday's hit by pitch was there any intent from Winkler to Bryce Harper comment below stir in the pot why not hey, I'd be less than honest if I said I didn't think that it might have been for a second I mean Dero you played I, I just knowing Dan Winkler and knowing kind of his newness to the league and what kind of what he's about I, I, I just would find it hard to believe that he went out if he did it he did it totally on his own. But how many times do you see a major leaguer throw a pitch that starts a foot and a half off the plate and then breaks another foot toward the hitter. Yeah. I mean you don't see that very often especially with the outing he had a couple of innings he was he was money. Yeah it's been a tough couple games for Bryce he took one off the knee against Philadelphia and then off the shin last night. Gio Gonzalez is picking up momentum also we are scheduled to talk to Tanner Roark so we'll ask him about Gio and his outing so far any questions that you have for national starter Tanner Roark get them on the comment section right now and we'll ask them to Tanner this would be six in a row retired by Gio there it is any questions for Tanner Roark fire away I'd like to ask him about the facial hair situation he had for a bit. What was that? Or he had the sideburns going on, right? He's ready. Oh, he's ready. <laughs> he's always ready. <laughs> and he hears us already, yeah, too. Oh, us. we're coming, Tanner. You could ask him. Yep. Strike three, bottom of the zone, Gio Gonzalez with paint. He had facial hair ADD for a while, but he's locked in again. <laughs> so is Gio. He has retired six in a row. Three up, three down again, just like in the fourth inning. He strikes out Ronald Acuna Jr. to end the top of the fifth with a 3 1 lead. Is that in there? Clearly. Right down the middle. Questions for Tanner Roark? Let us know. And let's bring in the Washington National starter, Tanner Roark, joining us right now on MLB Live on Facebook Watch. Scott Braun, Mark DeRosa. FP Santangelo. Okay, Tanner, let's start with Gio Gonzalez and what you've seen from him so far today. He's getting himself locked in. Yes, he is. He's uh, he's settling down a little bit, getting ahead of uh, ahead of the count, and uh, you know, using his curveball and his off speed, keeping the hitters off balance. When you're pitching, does a base hit, scoring a run, fire you up for when you go back out on the mound? 
Yeah, it fires me up to uh, try to get out there as fast as possible and get my warm-up pitches in and make the, uh, the team that was just in the field for such a long time or however long it may be to, to get back out on, on the field and get the pitcher out the, back out there. Hey, Tanner, we met with uh, Davey Martinez before the game, and he senses no panic on this club. Take me inside. What, what are you guys chatting about in the dugout, in the clubhouse? I mean, you have to be scoreboard watching a little bit. I know there's 50-plus games left, but it says that it's time to go, right? Yes, it definitely is. And, you know, uh, this series is, is, is kind of a big series. Um, we definitely been watching the Phillies, but, uh, you know, we're just the cliche of taking it one game at a time, which you actually have to now. So um, just win. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. And that's we got to keep everybody in the dugout fired up and, you know, not think that uh, we can't come back from, you know, two runs down, three runs down and, you know, just pitching to our strengths and doing everything little to to win ball games. We got any awesome Facebook questions? We have tons of questions. <laughs> Ready for this one, Tanner, from Lucas Gibson. How hard is it to pitch behind guys like Strasburg and Scherzer? I feel like it would be easier because bullpen might be rested and you get to watch them work some magic on the mound and try and follow it, right? Exactly. Um, the, just the competition within uh, the game, you know, you you want to try to live up to to how good and how, how good Max and, and Strauss can pitch and have been pitching and throughout their careers have what they've done and you know you try to do your best to to compete at that level and th that makes you a better pitcher. This is Adam Eaton Tanner tell the fans out there people listening at home what it means on a getaway day to grab a W how it changes the entire complexion of the bus ride to the airport the entire flight. Oh it definitely does. Uh, we always uh, on getaway days. We always we always yell happy flight so we can have a happy flight, you know, <laughs> so we can get that W and, uh, you know, have a have a fun bus ride, uh, you know, and that's the biggest thing is obviously winning, but to have a getaway day win and, you know, we got a one o'clock game tomorrow, too. So get out of here and and win this one and get on the road to Chicago the Tanners from Illinois what's the pass list looking like oh, for yeah. Wrigley Field not too bad right now it's uh, we got uh, just my brother on brother and girlfriend on Saturday sent to right field Mark in the corner for the second out Trey Turner is retired they, they, they usually do a pretty good job of of getting their own tickets surprisingly enough <laughs> even my mom and dad they don't even ask for tickets they don't they won't accept it I don't know why. Yeah, wait. We just mentioned on Facebook. Wait now, you're gonna get like hundreds of requests. All of a sudden. <laughs> well, Tanner, here's one from Troy. This is what we've been waiting for. Troy said, "Just wanted to tell you, you're the man. Do you have any superstitions with your facial hair? You just seem to change it up a lot." Oh my goodness, does he? Um, I don't know. I usually have a beard. I just I tried to switch things up with the with the chops and the and the mustache just for you know see if we could uh, you know change the the luck around on our side just a little bit so do you ever come out of the bathroom like with the mutton chops everything and your wife's like Tanner no yeah. oh ab absolutely when I yeah. when I came out of the bathroom after I did that she was, <laughs> she was like I can't believe it <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh, well, well we'll see how it goes for the ball club dear it's for the ball club. yeah it's, it's all right we're already married anyway so <laughs> <laughs> you won the prize. You have, Soto takes a strike. You have tons of superstitions, though, game day, don't you? Uh, see, I used to be, like, super superstitious. But now it's just I just want to I drink from the same water bottle that I get from when I go out into the bullpen and I fill it back up. I mean, it's just little things like that. But I was told that the more superstitions you have, the more things you have to worry about. So... For a guy that is very used to be very superstitious and still is, you know, minutely superstitious, uh, it's, uh, it's 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 a good thing to to not have that many superstitions, just so you don't have to be. Oh, if this superstition's off, then uh, my whole day's screwed up. I like it. Three, two to Juan Soto. Diving play made by Albies, and that will sit down the side. Tanner, thanks for the time. We'll talk soon, okay? All right, guys. Thanks. 
Tanner Roark joining us, and that play ends the fifth inning. Ozzy Albies can do it all. Man, what an extra base hit machine he's been, and we just saw the work that he does defensively, Mark. And there's more to this story. Oh, there's a there's a lot more. <laughs> Scotty B. I've lived in Atlanta almost 20 years now, so everywhere you go in the Atlanta area, you would think they're going to have country concerts at SunTrust Park. The Jason Aldeans, the Luke Bryans of the world. Not the case when this guy shows up. Ozzy Osbourne started the Ozfest back in the day, and he brought it to SunTrust Park. All right? He's got all the boys there. 276 batting average right now. 20 home runs leads the Atlanta Braves. He was almost the starter in the Nash, in the Nash, for the National League in the All-Star game. He changed the complexion early for this team. He was an extra base machine, putting him on par with a lot of big time guys and kind of set the tone for the top of that order and just changed the dynamic. There's a huge mo youth movement going on in Atlanta. And you look, I don't know if that's a set list or the lineup right there. That kid's getting it. <laughs> Freddie Freeman backing him up. Dansby Swanson picking and grinning. And Nick Markakis having a career year. Oh, old school Preston Tucker was still on the team when we first rolled this out on MLB Central. And Ronald Acuna Jr. playing center and left field. So look, get your tickets. Ozfest. I'm in. They do concerts it, it, right here at I National think it's Park. I think it's coming back in 19 as well. <laughs> So the answer to our Braves <laughs> fan group poll, who has had the greater impact on the Braves' success this season, Albies or Acuna Jr., and Albies wins the race by a landslide, and part of that has to do with the fact that he's been with the team much oh, longer yeah. this season. Oh, Dude, yeah. I just threw my underwear on stage. That was, <laughs> that was I might have misspoken, but Ozzie Albies was in the lead for the National League, the starter, for the longest time, but didn't Javi Baez track him down? Costi, who started, who started second base for, for the NL in the All-Star game? Baez. Baez. It was down to the wire, too. Braves fans did an excellent job voting this year. Yes, they did. Nick Markakis in. But what about the, I mean, the little guys hitting 20 jacks now? I mean, it's everywhere. You, you see this guy, I mean, I know he's strong, and I know he came to camp healthy for the first time this year, and he really worked on his strength in the offseason. But the leg kick and the uppercut, I mean, you see so many little guys hitting taters now. That just didn't happen back in the day. I, what, what I see, FP, is guys going to the plate with no consequences and no conscience. And what I mean by that is they're not worried about appeasing their manager by putting a ball in play with two strikes. They're not afraid to punch out. They're, they're swinging in any count. You see right there, Ozzy Albies, high leg kick on his backside. I mean, this guy is 5'9", and he is reaching back. And I might be giving him a little bit right there. I mean, he's reaching back for everything he got. He has. 1-1 one, one to Albies. Didn't get it's much of it. It's a matter of controlling the strike zone. Away. It's a matter of controlling the strike zone. When you look at Ozzy Albies, if he can continue to mature and game plan and know and know the strike zone, he's going to be even more dangerous. Let's get more from Dan Colco right now. Dan? Scott, you guys talking about superstitions with Tanner Roark. Here's one for you regarding Freddie Freeman. Under his Braves jersey, every single game now for the last handful of years, he wears the same undershirt. It's one that Chipper Jones gave to him and it actually has chippers career numbers on the back of it now at this point wearing it every single day it's pretty tattered I got to tell you he showed it to me yesterday for a while he didn't even realize he'd been wearing it for every game but he says now he just has to it's so much a part of his daily routine that when I asked what he would do if the shirt was lost he said the, he would burn this place down no one would be playing baseball and he had a huge smile on his face <laughs> he said there is a backup t-shirt for whatever that's worth when the current one bites the dust eventually. But he feels pretty confident that one's sticking around for a little while longer. And he handles that breaking pitch into right field. It's a one out base hit. Chipper Jones still has strong connections to this oh. Atlanta Braves franchise. Him and, him and Freddie are super tight. This is what makes Freddie such a pain on left handed. Oh, check that out right there. That's at the Hall of Fame. Had Who a chance. That? Yeah, I had a chance to go up there and sit on the desk for MLB Network and Chipper nailed his speech. I knew he would. Great feel, but him and him and Freddie are super tight friends. All right, so let's get your favorite moment in the career of Chipper Jones in the comments section. And Mark, what's your favorite? 
My favorite moments with Chipper are the moments no one knows about. My favorite moments are sitting in a hotel in Cincinnati wondering how I was going to hang in the big leagues and the phone rings at 11:45, and he's like what are you doing and I'm like nothing and he's like let's go to the yard and let me teach you how to hit. Let me teach you how to game plan. Let me teach you how to how, how to form a routine. If you're going to be in this league you're going to have to perform every day and be consistent. The great players are consistent. You hear Brian Snicker talk about Nick Markakis. Those are the things for me. There, I, I can't think of one play on the field. It was just kind of the embodiment of, of what he represented. Nick Markakis the other way. Chopper and the Nats will try and turn two. And they will not. Markakis is safe at first but Freeman out at second. So two down in the top of the sixth. And Dan, what's Freddie Freeman's takeaway from Chipper Jones being inducted into the Hall of Fame? Well, he was really proud of Chipper, as D. Rowe was just talking about. The two of them very close. And in terms of on-field takeaways, Freeman said that Chipper was big on routine in terms of watching video. That's not something that Freddie does a lot. He says his biggest takeaway from Chipper was something he told him to keep your hands on the line of the batter's box. If you focus on the line and keep your hands there, he says your hands will stay inside the baseball a lot longer. So that's one tip that Chipper gave Freddie years ago that he thinks has really had a lot of uh, effect on his results over the last handful of years. Kurt Suzuki into center field and in comes Taylor. He's got it. Have a day Michael A. Taylor. Covers a lot of ground in a little bit of time. The speed and the strides from Michael A. Taylor. And that will sit down the side in the top of the sixth. He's such an impact player. When he comes off the bench, he has an impact on the game. When he gets a spot start, he has an impact. So a home run and now this from the Nats center fielder. And he's just so good that he's a difference maker whenever he's in the lineup. So not a lot of center fielders make that play and not a lot of center fielders can hit a home run as far as Michael A did today. So big time influence on this game so far. And the Nationals playing excellent defense this afternoon. Nice play from Daniel Murphy over at second base too. Let's get back to Chipper Jones for a moment as everyone's letting us know their favorite Chipper moments in the comment section. Chipper was immortalized two weeks ago up in Cooperstown. Atlanta Braves fans showed me almost every night what it meant to believe in something unconditionally. I want to thank Braves fans that are here today and the ones who are back home. As a player, traveling is the hardest thing to do, being away from our families and our fans. But with you, whether we were in St. Louis, Colorado, or here in New York, when I stepped out of the dugout for batting practice and saw Braves, Braves fans 10 deep, sometimes stretched down to the foul pole, you made us feel like we never left home. You are the fans I imagined in my head playing in the backyard all those years ago. You're why I love coming to the plate with the game on the line. Crazy train blaring in the background. And why I wanted so badly to come through for you. You have believed in me since I was an 18 year old kid and you were still there for me during my swan song in 2012. You cheered me on through the career highs. You stuck by me through life's lows. I will never Forget that. You're the reason I never wanted to play anywhere else. I couldn't be prouder to go into the Hall of Fame today with an Atlanta A on my cap. I love you guys. Thank you. That's a 10 out of 10. He nailed that speech. He absolutely nailed. And I wasn't shocked. He, he could command the room. When he walks in, he's got a presence about him. And uh, when he spoke in team meetings, you certainly stood up and... and and listened intently and um, yeah I wasn't shocked he nailed it. What would he say in team meetings. Can you is there any one thing he said or one meeting and, stick out. And that's the. Th yeah a couple times. I want to hear. For a few choice words. I'll, I'll flip it another way. I, I think for me that's something the Nationals I don't want to say lack for a better term but when you talk about galvanizing moments and they talk about Max Scherzer is is I have a hard time when a pitcher is my vocal leader. Anthony Rendon up the middle. It's a base hit to start off the bottom of the six for the Nationals. Even if it's not just a pitcher. I love it. I a, love it. I a, don't get me wrong. Max Scherzer can say whatever he wants whenever he wants but he's only out there once a week. 
So there has to be some type of position player that goes to the post every day that has the loudest voice in the room. And Chipper, I always felt when it needed to be addressed, right, wrong, or indifferent, could say anything to anybody without fear of getting punched in the face. And that's how that's how you got to be. You're around these guys more than your own wives and kids and families and girlfriends and, and whoever. So you have to be able to be honest with each other. To right center field, and that will drop for Daniel Murphy. Rendon being waved home. Here he comes, the relay from Albies. Not in time. Anthony Rendon scores, and Daniel Murphy has himself an RBI double. It's 4-1 Nationals. Yeah, you're seeing Murph start to lock in, and he, the, the more healthy he gets, the lower he gets in his stance on his legs. Look where he's sitting right here, and that just runs back right down the middle. And so he'll cheat on a fastball in and pull it every now and then. He goes shopping at the gap, and then it was watch Anthony Rendon run. So Murph into second easily, and Rendon with a sweet slide at home to extend the Nats' lead. Daniel hits Murphy. Is back, folks. It's taken him a while to get to that form, Scott, but lately he has been the guy that he was in 16 and 17. Watch the slide by Rendon again. You give him a lane out there, then he reaches back with the left hand, a smile on his face as he crosses the plate. He has fun playing baseball, and so does Murph. Rendon base hit, then Murphy double, and it's 4-1 Nationals. Now it's Ryan Zimmerman. Great response to, to your statement, Mark, from Molly Martin. She said, okay, but Scherzer actively seeks to play more, whether it be hitting <laughs> or whatever. He's trying. <laughs> he's, and his batting average, he, might, he should be batting fourth right now. <laughs> 99 <laughs> times out of 100, D. Rowe, I agree with you right there. But if you have resume, don't you think resume matters? Three Cy Youngs, and when you go out there every fifth day, you just let it all out, whether you're running 90 feet to first as hard as you can, whether you're getting down a bunt, whether you're striking out 15. Normally, I would say yes. I mean, you're not telling me how to play if you play one out of every five days, but when you play like he does and you have the resume he does, I feel that it has more cachet. Zimmerman to deep center, and that's Inciarte tracking it down. He he, a hun FP 100% has the cachet. And in those meetings, Tom Glavin's voice carried as much weight as Chipper Jones. It's just from a position player standpoint and a grind standpoint. I think back to, like, Jonathan Papelbon trying to choke out Bryce Harper. I had a problem. I know Jonathan Papelbon. I know him well, and I know he puts his best foot forward every time. But you can't do that to a guy that's out there playing thousands of innings a year and question... I I for me, that was always difficult. Mad Max certainly has a resume to say whatever he wants, whenever he wants. But there, you need that position player yin yang to the to those meetings. So, have you ever played for a manager that was a pitcher? I feel like you'd have a problem with that. No, I don't think I yeah, have. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> back in my, in my arsenal. Zimmerman flew out to center. It moves Murphy to third base. And FP Timothy asks, should Zim be the voice? He's the veteran. You can't make somebody do you something You can't make somebody do, do what yeah. they don't want to do. You can't just um, say, you're the leader, go get them, and you're, <laughs> you know, you're kind of quiet, you lead by example. I think Zim leads by example. Watch him run to first every time. Yep. He respects 90 feet. He busts it down the line. He plays hard every time he's in the lineup, and he has for years. So there's different ways to lead, and not, it's not always vocal. Michael A. Taylor coming off a home run in the bottom of the fourth and swinging on 3-0 Albies playing right up the middle and that's where the shift comes into play Michael A Taylor is retired and there's two down now Matt Wieters 0 for 2 been along those lines, D. Rowe, you were a vocal guy it's hard yeah. it's hard to step up in front of the team when you're not playing every day Yeah, exactly I just felt like it was a young group. I think it's a case-by-case -case scenario. I felt like we had an eclectic, organic group in 2012. You had the Jason Wirtz that weren't afraid to speak his mind as well. Bryce was young and yearning for knowledge. Uh, Strasburg, I didn't think those guys knew how talented they were. So when I showed up to spring training, that was kind of like my MO. I'm like, well, I played with the Braves. I've been to post-seasons with this team hundreds of times I know what it looks like and this is what it looks like so I'm going to try and be that older brother figure look at those mullions <laughs> hashtag MLB live on FB God, I look old in that picture next there's the crew 
You look old. No, are you kidding me? I saw Who's one next, comment. Next to you guys. Wait, what about Richard Smith? I saw this earlier. Did anyone ever tell Mark DeRossi looks like Ben Affleck with your batting helmet on? That's not bad. I actually You'll take that. I actually, I'll 100% take that. I'll, I actually have been been told that. I've also been told <laughs> I look like Adam Sandler, so I don't know which is which. Is, I'm going to go with Affleck. Gio Gonzalez is behind one and two. Matt Wieters was intentionally walked. No pitches needed to be thrown. So he's at first. And Daniel Murphy over at third. And Parsons gets Gio Gonzalez for the strikeout. So the RBI double from Daniel Murphy extends the Nationals' advantage to 4-1. Earlier today, we had the President's Race, a fixture here at Nationals Park. d when you were here, all the Rangers let Teddy win. Yeah. Didn't he win finally when you were here? <laughs> With the Hawaiian T-shirts. Did he go the distance? Who won? Adams. <laughs> All right, so Thomas Jefferson with the W. He's up to 20 wins on the season, and that matches the best. Uh, what is the best race in MLB? So we just saw the President's race. There's the Flash down in Atlanta racing against a fan, but the fan gets a large, large lead, or the sausage race. Uh, and this is the freeze, by the way, not the flash. He runs like the flash, but oh, the freeze with ease beats most the fans. The freeze has been beat, and the, he's been beat multiple yeah, times. Yeah, but his sprint winning it percentage is what? Blooms off the road. Did he goose him on the way by? Is that legal? <laughs> so is this the best, Mark? The I sausage like race. I like the I like the president's race. I really do. Well, I'm obviously biased. Yeah. Who clubbed one of the sausages that one time? Remember that? Randall, Randall yeah. Simon. Yeah. Randall Simon. Yeah. I think they pressed charges on him. Yeah. That mistake. was funny. But I thought it was. Well, that was a real bat. I was like, if it's, you know, <laughs> an inflatable bat? or something, yeah. it's whatever. But that was no joke from Randall Simon back in the day. But anyway, let us know the sausage race or the freeze down at Atlanta. Or I think I just the wanna, president's race. I just want to make this quick point right here. I see a lot of comments coming in about why Wes Parsons was still in the game after Anibal Sanchez. We're starting to see a lefty warm up mid inning right here. They're, they they have an epic run right now. They don't have an off day until almost the 27th. They have a doubleheader coming up on Monday. They they need innings. They have a young bullpen, and with Annabelle coming out, they they had to get some length out of Parsons. And it's not like it's a blowout. Exactly. No. Many Braves fans have said, stay tuned. Atlanta with many comebacks in them so far this year. There's Adam McCreary. And that would be the second Major League debut of the day, too. Another new call up for Atlanta after the two moves were made a couple days ago. Meanwhile, Gio Gonzalez is 85 pitches into his outing, pitching now in the top of the seventh. This is. A terrific sign for Nationals fans after Gio had struggled mightily over a long stretch. 11 starts where his ERA was in the high sixes. Overall on the season, it has now dropped below four. He had an all star start to his season. And he's facing Charlie Culberson, Ender Inciarte, and Dansby Swanson here in the seventh. This is the stuff I love right here. All right, he's faced Charlie Culbertson. He's one for two. He's faced him twice, and both times he's gotten a full counts and gone three-two changeup. So if you're Culbertson, you have to be thinking a changeup's coming at some point in this at bat. You just sit on one, like right here, one-two. You can't. Do uh, it you can't strikes. do it with two yeah. strikes, but I'm definitely leery of it. What do we have? Fastball in. One two. And Culberson gets some of it. Zimmerman handles for the first out. My mom just checked in on Facebook. Heads up. Here come the comments. <laughs> what did she say? Anything good? <laughs> no, Giannina Santangelo just checked in, so. My mom and social media 
don't go together well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're 70-something, it's just it's new to her. Tell her she better be nice in the comment yeah. section. Well, she will be. She will? Yeah. Ender Inciarte with one out. Shows bunt. And that's a strike from Gio. Some Braves fans were not pleased with you calling out the freeze like Connor. He said he's been beaten because the opponent gets a huge head start. <laughs> I like the freeze. I think it's awesome. I love going to Atlanta. I think the new ballpark is outstanding. The new ballpark is beautiful. The, the clubhouse is ridiculous. The Braves clubhouse is unbelievable. And that's right to Murphy hanging around in the air for the second out. Now Dansby Swanson who walked back in the second flew out to right field in the fifth. I want to see Burns versus the freeze. That would be a good one. Eric nope. Burns against yeah, the freeze. I want to see that. That's a good call. If he survives his Forrest Gump trip. <laughs> well he's on a bike not on foot. That gives me more hope. If Gio Gonzalez can I make quick work thinking. of Dansby yep. Swanson, we might see him pitch the eighth. Fans let us know in the comments section. How long of a leash do you give Gio Gonzalez? You have a 4-1 lead. Would you let him go in the eighth and maybe even in the ninth? Give us a number actually as Swanson puts it on the ground and there's another quick inning for Gio Gonzalez. Daniel Murphy makes the play. Give us a number of pitches that you would let Gio Gonzalez go. Obviously, it's a field thing. He's done. You think so? He just looked at the umpire and said, good job today. So in his mind, that would tell me he's walking off the mound thinking that was it. He's under 100 pitches. FP, help us out here. He's what not he getting any again? handshakes. He's setting his glove down. He's talking to Matt Weider, so. And he has gotten 114 pitches this season as a season high. There's an Four answer. times. Four times 114 pitches. He's Fans, done. would you want to see Gio Gonzalez for more? I think he's done. Let's go back to Gio and his conversation with home plate umpire Vic Carapaza as he walks off. Hey, he just tells him good job right there, way to battle with him. And Gio, hey, one bad pitch, 2-0. Middle cut to Nick Marquez. Cake is a lot of guys have done that this year. He really pitched a, a nice ball game, incorporated a good changeup, good feel, tried to come heater in, backdoor breaking ball, gave him a great start. He retired 12 of the last 13 batters he faced. Hey, Nationals fans, the next homestand begins on Friday, August 17th, against the Marlins and the Phillies. Come out to Nationals Park and see Harper, Soto, and Rendon take the field. Get your tickets now at nationals.com. And the Braves return to Atlanta tomorrow to begin a 10 game homestand against the Brewers, the Marlins, and the Rockies. Come out to SunTrust Park and you'll see Acuna, Marquecas, and Albies in action. Your tickets are available on Braves.com. 4 1, Washington leading Atlanta as we get up and stretch. Brilliant day for Gio Gonzalez. Could be a big sign for the Nationals. This has been a big series. For Atlanta offensively. You look at the eight runs they put up yesterday. And they're being held to just one today thanks to that man. Seven innings. The strikeout numbers weren't high but. Many ground ball outs for Gio Gonzalez this afternoon. And he is in line for a W. If the bullpen can carry them the rest of the way. Top of the order for Washington. Eaton, Turner, and Soto here in the seventh. And that's a foul ball down the line. Jonathan said. Dero will love this. The Lakewood Blue Claws in the Phillies organization have eyeball races and pork roll egg and cheese races. 
I call it Taylor Ham, but <laughs> I know exactly where he's going. Eyeball races? Yeah, I don't really know what that means, but <laughs> we'll go with it. Let's get weird today. Parsons. Still going for Atlanta, definitely giving them the length. After Sanchez went down following two innings, Sam Dixon, I would have kept Gio in. Nats bullpen unpredictable lately. And FP, that's something that I was personally worried about. Kelby and Herrera hitting the shelf. And Brandon Kinsler and Sean Kelly were traded in the past week. So it's a younger, less experienced Nationals bullpen. A 3 2. Eaton drills it to right, but it's right to Nick Markakis for the first out. But what do you think about the Nationals bullpen from here on out? Kelby and Herrera looks like he's going to miss maybe up to two weeks. Well, they're dinged up right now, no doubt, with Herrera out. Sean Doolittle making progress. They don't want to rush him back. It's a bone bruise that they don't want to turn into a stress fracture which happened with Jason work last year so they're taking time with Doolittle don't want to injure his arm while he's compensating for his foot but I mean you got guys down there that are proven and you know Justin Miller has been a tremendous find he's been fantastic all year Ryan Madsen's great so I mean they have guys that have been there done it and I think they're going to play matchup ball here moving forward and then try to get the game to Madsen he's been named the closer by Davey Martinez since the injury to Herrera. Madsen with an ERA in the low fours, but he's been on a roll. Parsons is ahead of Turner 0 2. Can't get him to chase. Trey Turner has reached base twice today out of his three plate appearances. High chop on the left side for Culberson. And Turner is safe at first. Infield base hit for one of the fastest players in the game. That last chop hung in the air for a while at third. And Turner makes it safely for the Nationals with one away. When you watch Trey play every day, as soon as his ball is in the air, I'm going to be safe. <laughs> I mean, I, I, char, nice try, Charlie. He, he did everything he could, but you just know he's too fast. And he's so effortless the way he runs. Sometimes it looks like he's not trying. And he's still running a four flat or a three nine or whatever it is to first base that's above average. He can really get it. It does look effortless. Yeah. He could beat the freeze. <laughs> Done. Good. Hey, Freddie Freeman over at first base keeping Trey Turner close. We saw him in the clubhouse today and he said, I might steal four bags today. Yeah, he got mad at me because I said <laughs> on the, the hit on MLB Central that I thought. Acuna Jr. was a nice compliment to the slow Freddie Freeman and Nick Markakis and I forgot at the moment that Freddie could run so he got me right and I got into the clubhouse and told me how many career stolen bases and I screamed at him I said hey there's no visiting broadcaster that talks about you more than I do. We love Freddie Freeman and hate Freddie Freeman all at the same time. <laughs> there he goes. Off goes Turner to second base and he is in there with no problem as long as he keeps his hand on the bag. I was going to say that's the tough part you see Dansby Dansby Swanson drop the knee right there when you go in head first and he's called out. He and his left hand could he could have something wrong with his left hand. Yeah he looks like he's hurt right now I don't know what's going on. And did Dansby Swanson push him off the bag. That's uh, a good question he, he, he definitely beat dropped the throw. The and he's staying on the base is he safe. He's definitely in there before the tag. Does the left hand come off? It looks like it does. And Swanson kept the tag on his left hand. What do you got, Dero? He is called out. Watch the left hand. Yeah, he's out. It's an old Chase Utley trick right there. You drop the left knee, you can do anything to. See his left index finger come up. Watch his index finger on the left hand. Watch it hit Culberson's knee. Just watch his finger right there kind of flip back. Yep. Barry Larkin used to do that. He'd drop a knee on you and you couldn't get to the bag. And then finally I decided I'm going Go feet, feet first. first. And I'm going to leave a little mark on your knee. Yep. If you want to play that game, watch. Here's my cleats. 
So now bags empty for Juan Soto. And the 2-0 is delivered for a strike. It's 2-1. Soto drove in a run with his bases loaded walk back in the third inning. The Nats put up two in the third, one in the fourth, and another run in the sixth, adding up to their 4-1 lead. And Soto weakly to the right side for Albies. So nicely done by Wesley Parsons. And that's the third out as we've reached the top of the eighth inning and time to play my favorite game. You've both played this game before. Name of the game, like it or leave it. If you're a fan of the following comment, thumb up. Otherwise, thumb down. The Red Sox will set the single season win record and win the World Series. So that would require 116 wow. wins. They're on pace for 114. Bo both things to accomplish, that's very difficult. Uh, yeah, I'm not giving them both. I, I would say this on that. FP. Alex Cora is the man. Wow. Yeah. I don't know about winning the World Series. <laughs> but you How about the this? Wins right that? He, he has it's not done allowed. Amazing. I just love Alex Cora. He's a teammate of mine in, in Los Angeles. Um, he went to the University of Miami and he was a player here for the Nats my first year. I think he's doing a great job. It's it's hard to manage a really good team. You think anybody can drive a Cadillac. It's not the case. You got to manage personalities. Yeah. You have a high you have the, the media in Boston that he's dealt with. I mean, I, I mean, he's the manager of the year for me. What's next? We have three more to get through before we get to the next half inning here. The most intriguing final season series will be Braves at Phillies. We have Cardinals Cubs. I'm, I'm going to go Braves at Phillies. Yeah, I'm going to stay up on that as well. Yankees Red Sox won't be as relevant now. No. Everybody, sure. know, everybody knows I'm a homer. I think the Rockies Nats series. Ooh, at the end that's a good one. Long. You're right, FP. In Colorado. And you're playing in that ballpark, playing 15 to 14 games to get into the playoffs. That'll be intriguing and exciting. What else do we have? This one for the Atlanta Braves. That just straight up. Will they reach the postseason? <laughs> no. Here we go. On, Can I go like this? <laughs> Because I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to duck. You guys go ahead. I'm going down. Ah. That was Where difficult. Where are they in the wild card? One back? No, they, they're one, one back of, of the first wild card, but they're in the second wild card right now. Let's go up, Dan. Go up. Be positive. All right. Last one. Bryce Harper will get the largest contract among 2018 free agents. Really? Do you feel confident about that one? It's trending up. Dero going Machado. two thumbs up. Yeah, I think for me, he's the guy. Over Manny Machado. The only reason I say that is because Manny Machado has dealt with some knee injuries throughout the course of his career. That and was a million years ago. Uh, was it? Yes. I blew my knee out. I think about it every day. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're looking at free agents. I'm I think you. Machado and Harper lead the pack in terms of biggest contracts that they could command in the offseason. Come on, Bryce is 26. He's won a unanimous MVP. He's trending upward. I know he's polarizing and people love to hate on the guys who are polarizing but when he's right he puts he puts a franchise on his back puts butts in the seats too. Yeah. Justin Miller on the mound for the Nationals he replaces Gio Gonzalez. 31 year old in his fourth season in the majors. And he's facing pinch hitter Ryan O'Flaherty or just Flaherty. I'm thinking of. The old reliever for the Atlanta Braves. Did you play with him? Eric O'Flaherty. No, O'Flaher? I didn't. No? I didn't. Ryan, 32 year old super utility player for Atlanta. His playing time has dropped off. Had a hot, a hot start to the season. Batting in the nine spot. And that is a fair ball for Zimmerman. One down. And now Ronald Acuna Jr. Cunha Jr. was the star of yesterday's game. Not only did he contribute a home run, a two run shot, 
That made it 7-1 Atlanta. Then in the bottom of that fourth inning yesterday, he robbed Matt Adams of a home run. Put the glove over the wall in straightaway center field. That baseball was going probably about 410 feet. And Acuna Jr. made a nice play. And FP, I was watching the game, and you pointed out how he's still working on backtracking to the baseball. And Brian Snitker said he still has work to do in the outfield. But it all looked good there. I mean, all of his tools on display yesterday, the power, the defensive ability, the jumping ability. But, you know, he went first move on a steal off a lefty and beat the relay to second base. So you saw every bit of this kid yesterday, and it was impressive. Oh, in the air to deep left. And that ball is gone. Ronald Acuna Jr. with a home run on back to back days. And he cuts into the deficit. It's 4 2. I want people to watch when we bring this back on replay how easy he makes the game look. How nothing, it doesn't, he's not making it look difficult. This is, this is a left handed, sweet swinging guy from the right side at 20 years old. Minimal hand movement. It's simplistic for him to get through the zone with such whip. I'm telling you, he reminds me of Javi Baez. The way he approaches an at bat, he's dangerous. He gets that leg kick up early and slow, gets away from the baseball, and just generates tons of pop. Wow. Albies in the air, and Soto has it. So two down, and here comes Freddie Freeman. Ronald Acuna Jr. is 20 years 20. old. Juan Soto's 19. So much earlier, a fan in the comments section said, who would you rather have for the rest of their playing career? Both. Man. No, you can't do yeah, that. I want them both. I know you'll answer. Soto. Yeah, or I'm going to be Jr. the homer. I'm going to go with Acuna Jr. I know FP and Juan Soto is probably the safer play just watching the way he goes about his at bats. And that's the deep center field. Taylor oh. can't run it down. Off his glove and off the wall. It's a double for Freddie Freeman. His second double of the day, his third hit of the afternoon. And the Braves are in business again with two outs. I think in talking to Brian Snicker, I think there's things that, that obviously Acuna Jr. needs to work on defensively. But I see a premier defender in the middle of the diamond, a guy who can steal bags, and a guy who's going to hit me 30 plus home runs. And just looks like he makes. I, I gravitate to guys who make the game look simplistic. You watch Javi Baez with the Chicago Cubs, they just do things that can't be taught. How about this? I'll take Freddie Freeman. <laughs> there you go. I'm serious. He wasn't an option. This guy needs way more play than he gets. He's one of the best players I've seen in a long time. See if you start to rally for Atlanta. Patty said, time for the Braves to rally. Let's go, Braves. Nick Markake is up next. He homered back in the second inning. Atlanta getting a run off Justin Miller thanks to Ronald Acuna Jr.'s 14th home run of the season, or make that his 13th home run of the season. Into the left field seats. His second home run in as many days. And something has clicked for Ronald Acuna Jr. since he was placed at the top of the lineup. And that coming in the second half of the season for Atlanta has provided an extra spark. Yeah, he re it reminds me of what A.J. Hinch did down in Houston with George Springer. It kind of takes that thinking process. We talked about it. it. You know, you hit second in the lineup. I know the game's changed, but you're still mentally want to put yourself in positions, move runners, and do different things for guys hitting behind you. When you lead off, and the manager just gives you kind of that freewheeling style of play. He can go up there and, and, and pretty much just let his talents take place. Skied off the bat of Marquecas. Taylor trots over. And that will sit down the Atlanta Braves. Well, now where Justin Miller wanted this one, he might have got away with the pitch here to Nick Marquecas. Watch where this pitch is. That's right in the sweet spot. It's an out he'll take it but to Nick Markakis definitely just missed that one. Middle middle Nick Markakis homered earlier. Ronald Acuna Junior just hit a baseball 433 feet. But let's go back in time 
to the second inning where Nick Markakis provided this blast. 107 miles per hour off the bat. Hardest hit home run of the season for Nick. And 10 of his 14 home runs have been on the road. This is Anthony Rendon. And that is Acuna Jr. making the catch, but it's enough for Adam Eaton to come home. And the Washington Nationals had a 2-1 lead. Then in the fourth inning, it's Michael A. Taylor. A majestic blast off the bat to give the Nationals the 3-1 lead. And then Daniel Murphy socking this baseball in the sixth. A ton of open space, and here comes Rendon. That makes it 4-1 Washington. And we just saw Ronald Acuna Jr., the 20-year-old phenom. 13 home runs on the season. Cool, calm, literally cool, right in front of the fan. And he knows the Braves aren't out of it. 4-2 is your score as we've reached the bottom of the eighth inning. MLB Live on Facebook Watch continues here in our nation's capital. Beautiful day. Temperature in the low 80s this afternoon. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Acuna Jr. in left today. He was in center field yesterday. New man on the mound for the Atlanta Braves is Adam McCreary making his major league debut. 25 years old. Six foot nine, 250 pounds. Excuse me? You heard me. Six foot nine, 250. And at 25 years old, nowadays in the major leagues, you can look at that as late for making it, but often it takes more time for a left-handed pitcher at that height, at that height to figure it out. Yeah, you look at the recent trade with Chris Archer, Tyler Glass now going back to the Tampa Bay Rays. He talked about pitching at six foot seven. It took me, it's taken me a while to, to sync up all the mechanics. It's like a tall hitter. Same thing. I was watching the Little League World Series last night. One of the teams had a pitcher that was about this big, 12 <laughs> years old. It's like, this kid, are you kidding me? He's not 12. Anthony Rendon takes the first pitch for a strike high in the zone. McCreary is now the second tallest pitcher to appear in a major league game this season. Aaron Seegers made three appearances for the Twins this season. And Seegers is six foot ten. There's the breaking pitch. Big strikeout totals in the minor leagues this season for McCreary. Born in Laverne, California. Attended Azusa Pacific University. Ryan Madsen ready for the top of the ninth. I always thought it was hitting harder hitting against tall guys because A, they're closer to you, and B, the, the downhill the angle. angle on their fastball is harder to square up, I always felt like. Will Wagner said brings back memories of John Roush. <laughs> yeah, good point. He was an intimidating figure on the Big mound. Big boy. Count is full to Rendon. And up the middle for a base hit. Second of the day for Rendon. Such a good player, such an underrated player. He's quick as bad as anybody in baseball. His hands are right down in the strike zone. And watch how quick for me to be. I mean, he lets the ball travel deeper than most, and that's why he's always making good decisions at the plate. But watch the side swing. Foot down early, just a little rotation with the hands back, and then boom, like a snake. 
So here's Daniel Murphy. His double back in the sixth brought home Rendon and gave the Nats their fourth run of the game. I watch Anthony Rendon hit every day and it makes me wish I would have lowered my hands and just tried it and had him down here just nice and relaxed closer to the baseball. I oh I I loaded down my hands didn't load back they loaded down so my my big thing was that's OK if they load down they got to get back up for me to get my hack off. But I know I know what you're saying a lot of guys are Justin Turner's of the world they're starting their hands low Anthony Rendon and they're keeping them there. Yeah. And just putting the bat on plane. Murphy takes the 2 0 and gets it past Albies into right field. Hustling from first to third is Rendon and the Nationals have two on with nobody out in the bottom of the eighth. Any luck, Murph could have had four hits today. Hard hit ball his first time up, lined out to left his second, then a single and a single. So a two for four for Murph. And Wilmer Defoe going to pinch run, shore up the defense a little bit with a late inning lead. But another simplistic approach to hitting. Thought Albies might die for this and keep it in the infield in a first and second situation. So Murphy takes his seat. Wilmer Defoe right there at first. Rendon at third. And Ryan Zimmerman taking the first pitch off the plate. When we met with Dave Martinez this morning, the Nationals manager told us he wants his team to play with a sense of urgency on this travel day, a getaway day for the Nationals. Have you seen that, FB? I saw it from his pitcher for sure. Gio yeah. Gonzalez had a tough outing last time out. Gave up six runs on ten hits and just three and two thirds. And today he was a different guy. So I saw the urgency from the pitcher. And Davey also told us in that meeting that you know the reason they haven't made a run is because of injuries to the starting rotation. But he feels like when everybody gets healthy, it all starts with his starting pitching. So yes, yeah, Scott, to answer your question, I saw it with the guy on the mound today. One-one on the way to Ryan Zimmerman from Adam McCreary. It's two and one. What about a sense of urgency on that last play? So Ben just chimed in and said Ozzy has to lay out for that. What do you think? I mean I, I agree. I agree. He does. He has to get dirty right there. You got Rendon. You're going to you're going to have brain cramps throughout the course of 162 games. That's one of them right there for Ozzy. He had just do dove an inning before to, to get out of it. But yeah you have to know Rendon once that ball goes to right field. And it's weakly hit that he's going to be taken third. Puts puts McCreary in a tough spot right here with Adam uh, Ryan Zimmerman up first and third. Nobody out in a three one count. Having a big series but he's something off today. speed. Swings through the three one. Wow. Zim wants that pitch back. Jake said McCreary seems more suited for basketball than baseball. <laughs> Tim asking why the Braves pulled their starting pitcher after two. He must have looked at the box score. No, there was an injury. Anibal Sanchez takes a comebacker and leaves the game. And two MLB debuts since then and Ryan Zimmerman brings in the fifth run for the Nationals. RBI hit. It's 5 2 Washington. Yeah you get a you get a little bit big 3 1 trying to hit a three run bomb Ryan's. Been the most productive hitter in Washington Nationals history. And what does he do he shortens up 3 2 and drives the ball just an absolute bullet the other way. You know Matt Adams has been so good Davey Martinez is having trouble getting both of these guys playing time. You know Brian Zerman had six hits in a doubleheader the other day. You've seen him I've seen him throughout. His tenure here when he gets hot he doesn't make outs he can carry a ball club for a month Eight. by himself. He's streaky and I think you, you ride that streak 
you ride that streak when you need to get back in a race. We'll see how much he plays moving forward, but a tough decision for the skipper. Well, yeah, playing with Ryan Zimmerman, I mean, this guy, like you said, he can carry an offense just the same way with Anthony Rendon. It's just these guys, they have unass there's an unassuming personality to these guys. They don't seek the spotlight. There's not a lot of flash in their game. So they kind of go quiet for a little bit. But having both these guys in the lineup, these are some of the best hitters in the game. Well, Van Hillard said, Zim's one of the most cool-headed dudes in the league. I mean, well put. He is. Ryan Zimmerman was the player of the month last year in the month of April. And the Nats were the best team in baseball at that point. They cruised through the National League East. But here come a young Atlanta Braves squad and a young, hungry Philadelphia Phillies organization in the top two spots for now. The Nationals six games back of the Phillies, five and a half behind Atlanta. They can pick up a game here against the Braves if Ryan Zimmerman can shut the door in the top of the ninth. Washington at 58 and 56. And Michael A. Taylor fouls that one off. I want to make this comment, though. You're watching a team. You're seeing Wes Parsons. You're seeing McCreary in these spots. He, he wouldn't be facing Ryan Zimmerman with a week left in the season. We would have multiple bullpen options, probably going double barrel. I think Ryan Snicker is just trying to find a way to get length with Annabelle coming out. If he can get back in this game and they can make some pitches, Maybe we steal one, but I don't think he wants to burn his A-list guys out of the pen when they got all these games without any off days and a double header mixed in there. So you, you kind of got to kind of got to ask McCreary to pitch in some tough spots to some tough matchups. He gets a strikeout looking. Vic Carapaza behind home plate with the call. Michael A. Taylor, the first out in the bottom of the eighth. And they got the Brewers tomorrow. So, you know, maybe, you know, you're thinking about that. And I remember when Davey Johnson was here, he told me the hardest thing he had to learn as a manager was how to lose a game. Yeah. Meaning that you're going to sacrifice one to win another. Not that you're sacrificing this one by any means, just down by three runs. But when your starter goes out early with an injury, maybe your thought process is, well, maybe the offense can pick us up today, even if I throw some kids into the game. Matt Wieters goes after the first pitch and fouls it away. Nothing in one. Only three games remain between the Braves and the Nationals after today. That comes in the middle of September. So you need to play catch up, and the Nationals will be able to do that against Philadelphia. Nine more against the Phillies, but just three more against Atlanta on the calendar. I never looked at the schedule as a player and I wonder how many Nats know they have nine games left against the Phillies you get so day to day in your bubble as a player you're so concerned with one at bat one pitch one game. You know you're just trying to play good baseball and win today's game I feel like. Yeah I, I always felt like I was I never went further than a week. I really did. I wanted to know who the pitching matchups were coming up when we were going into Pittsburgh or Cincinnati or whoever. But I wasn't yeah I was never really concerned with uh, the whole landscape of of how it played out. There were times and this is a true story where I would be on the charter asking players where we were going. No. Oh. 100 percent. I was so day to day had to pack accordingly pitch by me. pitch and we'd be getting on the charter and I had no idea where the second or third leg was of a road trip. I just knew there was a baseball game at 7 5. A ball and two strikes to Weeters. And in the air to left. Acuna Jr. sneaks in. And two down. After three consecutive singles to start the bottom of the eighth, producing one run for the Nationals, Taylor strikes out looking, and Weeters flies out to left. Now Mark Reynolds. Batting in the nine spot for the Nationals before we see Ryan Madsen in the top of the ninth. 35 years old. He was sitting at home waiting for a call, and he received that from the Nationals. Signed a minor league contract on April 16th. Such a good story, such a good dude.
11 home runs in 53 games played for Mark Reynolds. He's actually how, done how most is of he, his How damage. is he sitting home? I'd love to. I'd love to pick his brain and see Great what question. if if he had other offers. He did. He had minor league offers, and he thought, well, with what I did in Colorado last year, yeah, I don't deserve on. a minor league invite. So he's like, forget that, forget that, forget that. And then he saw Nolan Arenado charge the mound, and it fired him up. And he will drop that into left field. That's a base hit for Mark Reynolds, and that will score Wilmer Defoe 6-2, Washington. Thirty home runs last season for Colorado. And then Mike Rizzo called him and said, hey, we need you. Would you be willing to sign, go to the minor leagues, get ready a little bit, and we'll call you up? So he said, yeah. Arenado charging the mound. Remember the Rockies got in that brawl? Yeah, Fired him up. Yeah. And he's like, I miss it. Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> he's been awesome ever since day one. I think day one was in Arizona when he hit the home runs on Sunday Night Baseball, too. The Nats bench has been awesome. Matt Adams was all Howie Kendrick was really good him going down really hurt. It's a good point that nobody talks about anymore. Adam Eaton with two outs here in the eighth. Breaking ball in there for a strike from McCreary. The only point I made though is that if Howie Kendrick does not go down who knows if Juan Soto gets called up there wasn't a spot for him he's called up after the Kendrick injury. 19 years old, nobody saw this coming. Comment below if you thought Juan Soto was going to lead the league maybe in <laughs> OPS this year. Strike three, Adam Eaton. All goes I know down. is Victor Robles better be <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> because he's a, rated ahead of Soto on the prospect list. Yeah, he's got big, big shoes to fill in the outfield for the Nationals. They have some young talent. They also pull off two more runs and lead it 6 2 over the Braves. It started with Anthony Rendon. A base hit. Then Daniel Murphy with a knock to move him over to third. And Ryan Zimmerman, cool and calm, drives him home. And that put the fifth run on the board for Washington. Then Mark Reynolds off the bench. In comes Wilmer Depot. And it's a four-run edge for the Nationals trying to leave Washington DC with a series split. It's been a nice long day for us. We get here to the park early for MLB Live on Facebook Watch so we can hang out with the managers. Let's check out my Instagram story because we'll be live at Scott Braun on Instagram after the game. So a nice view this morning. That was probably around 1030 Eastern time. And then we hung out with Brian Snitker. Nice gif of Acuna Jr. and Max Scherzer up there. Dave Martinez, our meeting with him. So Snitker was hanging out in the lounge chair. <laughs> Dave Martinez has the incense, candles all over the place. Felt very zen, very cool and calm, and chilled out talking to Dave Martinez this morning. And apparently that's a routine for him. He has candles in the room every day. Yeah, it's better than you know, smelling dirty unis. <laughs> Trying to spice it up, change it up a little bit. <laughs> Ryan Madsen on the mound and there has been a lot of bullpen activity for the Nationals recently. Dan Colco back with us. Yes got a lot of bullpen moves for this Nationals club. They're essentially on their fourth string closer right now. Sean Doolittle and Kelvin Herrera both on the disabled list. Brandon Kinsler traded to the Cubs and so Ryan Madsen now finds himself not a safe situation with a four run lead but on the mound to close out a big game in the ninth inning. Madsen has worked the ninth inning a bunch in his career notched 30 saves with Oakland back in 2016 has indicated in the past he might be more comfortable in a setup role but now with Doolittle down with Herrera down you know we showed Greg Hollins there recently signed but kind of working back into form a lot more falls on the shoulders and right arm of Ryan Madsen on to close this one out. And the first pitch misses. It's Kurt Suzuki Charlie Culberson and Ender Inciarte do up for Atlanta here in the top of the ninth the Nationals three outs away from securing their 59th win of the season. A win would move them five bet games back of Atlanta the Braves sitting in second place in the National League East. It would be five and a half back of Philadelphia. And one huge difference 
is the division work so far this year. The Nationals are 24 and 24 against NL East foes. The Braves are 36 and 18 against NL Excuse East opponents. Me? That's real. I always go back to, to what Bobby Cox he used to give us like 40 games to get loose. And we would kind of be toiling around that 500 and he'd come in and say guys we're supposed to pound, pound the teams you're supposed to pound on and then play 500 against the good teams that are going to postseason will win this division. That could hold true if the Braves you got it you got a feast on the Marlins right now you got a feast on a, on, a, on a Mets team that has struggled. With a I mean as long as Jacob DeGrom's not on the mound. That's right. Kurt Suzuki drills a 2 1 pitch up the middle so the Atlanta Braves do set the table to start the night. And here comes Charlie Culberson. He's got some book on Nationals pitching. Well, I mean, as a player, when you have success against a certain team, you know that they know and that your game goes up and you have this swagger that maybe you don't have against a team where you don't have the numbers. There were certain teams I couldn't explain it, but I just felt better against them because I thought that they thought that I was good. <laughs> Serious. And then you start getting the first and the first baseman goes God you kill us all the time and you get the second and second in. base and tells you dude you wear us out and then you start to stand up a little taller and you you know you pull up your sleeves and show the guns a little more because against that team they're all talking about you they're complimenting you as you go around the bases around the cage and batting practice and I'm sure Charlie hills it for the Nats players like dude you wear us out that gives you confidence as a player and that's something that analytics can't tell you. Culberson. The other way base hit. And two aboard for the Braves here to start the ninth. Lewis Smith said I think they should have kept last pitcher referring to Justin Miller but Ryan Madsen is the man in the ninth inning for the Nationals for the foreseeable future. Well Brian Snicker wants this to get to Freddie Freeman somehow. And Davey Martinez doesn't. So when the bottom of the order starts getting on base and you're up by four you start to worry as a manager and Brian Snickers thinking all right this thing ain't over. Richard Trumbo saying Matt's incapable of blowing this game. Ender Inciarte up next. Suzuki on second Culberson on first and Madsen fires 96 inside it misses. It's starting to get interesting. Two in the bullpen Matt Grace on the left side and Coda Glover throws from the right side. And Coda Glover hasn't pitched in about a year and a half. He's been up with the club for a couple days now has not made an appearance yet. Last appearance was June 10th of last year to Zimmerman goes to second for one. That's the only play Trey Turner on the second base bag. So Charlie Culberson is retired and in Ciarte over at first and moving to third is Kurt Suzuki but one key out recorded by the Nationals. I have a question for Mark DeRosa. Do you take a strike right there if you're in CRT would, to I, try I to get just, the tie and run to just, the plate? Yeah I was just thinking the same thing. I, just, I, I really was. You can't fault him. He's in count leverage 2 0 right there. But Madsen scuffling to find his own. Leaving stuff middle cut Charlie Culberson goes the other way with a knock. Suzuki with a bullet up the middle. It, it I, I would have to have key hold him right there. Well, the senior member of the Nationals bullpen 37 year old Ryan Madsen gets one out. Dansby Swanson up and Johan Camargo on deck runner was moving from first to second in the right field corner Eaton makes the catch. That's enough to bring home Kurt Suzuki and Ender Inciarte scurries back to first so the Braves get another it's six three but the Nationals are one out away from a victory. That ball fooled Adam Eaton. He came over and said, oh, that's it better than I thought. He had to retreat and reach all the way over his head here at the end in the sun going toward the warning track. So that was 
potentially disastrous for the Nats, but he corrected his route and made a nice play. And now last chance, Johan Camargo. Usually the starting third baseman for the Braves, a routine day off. Twenty four years old. Much better numbers against left handed pitching so far this year. Good change up right there. Michael A. Taylor scheduled to join us after the game. Any questions for him let us know in the comments section. One one to Camargo upstairs it's two and one. Well, the Braves entered the day winning eight of ten and looking to take three out of four against the Nationals, but this day was dominated by Gio Gonzalez. Nats fans on their feet. 2 2. And Ryan Madsen has closed out the W for the Nationals. 6 3 year final. And a four game series split between Atlanta and Washington. It was a fun one. In a game that took just two and a half hours to complete. Afternoon baseball at Nationals Park. And the home crowd goes home happy. And we are live on Instagram right now at Scott Braun. We will take questions after we get off the air here. Any questions you have, follow at Scott Braun. And we'll have about a 10 to 15 minute post game show. But first we'll talk to Michael A. Taylor in about a minute or so. We'll take any questions in the comment section right now. For the Nationals, they up their record to 59 and 56. Atlanta falls to 62 and 50 on the year. Happy flight. A good getaway day win going to Chicago for a big three game weekend set against the Cubs then on to St. Louis. So. You talked about it. Everyone's going to be loose on the bus, loose on the plane, and maybe that translates into a, a win tomorrow in Chicago with the 1 o'clock start. That's right. Three at Chicago, four at St. Louis, then three against Miami, three more against Philadelphia for the Washington Nationals. And earlier today, we go back to the bottom of the fourth inning where Michael A. Taylor went long for Washington, and he joins us right now on MLB Live on Facebook Watch. Michael, congratulations on the victory. And the home run back in the fourth. Take us through that at bat. What did you see? Uh, you know, just looking for a pitch up in the zone, trying to drive something through the middle. Uh, got something soft out over the plate and was able to stay through it. Hey, Michael, D. Rowe here. I wanted to ask you, you're facing a guy you've probably never seen in your life before. Are you just looking for something up? You don't know what his slider really, how sharp it's going to be, how hot his heater is going to be. Yeah, I think... Uh, you know, seeing that first pitch was big, just trying to settle into the at-bat. Uh, like you said, you don't really know too much, and sometimes video can be deceiving. Um, so I saw a little video, went up there, just trying to pick up release point and uh, you know, just put a short swing on a, on a good pitch in the zone. We're also looking at a nice catch by Michael A. Taylor. Oh, wow. Laying out in short center field. Michael, how have you been able to stay so locked in and, and not playing every day? Whether you come off the bench at a double switch, you get one at bat, or you get a spot start, you're contributing big time every time you get a chance. Thank you. Uh, just trying to go through at bats on the bench, I think, has been big for me. You know, my routine is huge. Just trying to feel good at the plate, um, you know, and uh, not do too much. You know, a lot of guys, a lot of veteran guys have helped me a lot. You know, Mark is, is great off the bench, and we've been talking, you know, just doing the little things. All right, so it's going to be a happy flight.
to Chicago. What does Michael A. Taylor do on the plane? Are you hanging? Are you reading a book? Are you locked in on some video games? Card no. guy? What are you doing? I'm a card guy. I'm going to beat uh, Zim and Weeders in Pluck. There you go. That's kind of <laughs> an every flight thing for us. We'll get to it. Michael, thank you for joining us. Congrats on the W, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Michael A. Taylor with us on MLB Live on Facebook Watch. 6-3 your final as the Nationals top the Braves and they creep up in the National League East standings. Now five and a half back of first place and that's Philadelphia. They'll play later. And the Washington Nationals also chasing the Atlanta Braves. Not just for the division but also we pay attention to the wild card standings. Atlanta currently holding a spot by a half a game and the Nationals are just four and a half games out of a playoff spot. So FP at the end of the day Davey Martinez told us if we can make up one game a week we'll be fine and here they go at four and a half games out of second place at least for the wild card that would be a playoff spot. Yeah good sign for the Nats with Gio pitching well today that's a plus he's been struggling lately but I think a huge weekend series I don't think you can oversell how big this series is in Chicago this weekend. I mean, you have to go in there and at least take one. You definitely can't get swept, and you're wanting to take two out of three. I think on the flip side, Scotty B, for me, Atlanta, I watched Brian Snicker manage this game today thinking of the extended no days off double header on Monday. He gave some young guys a chance to get their feet wet, kind of protected some guys in the bullpen, and uh, they're in prime position to... Uh, play with house money and do a lot of damaging things down the stretch here. Yeah, they just have to maintain their endurance during this marathon. The Braves barely have a day off the rest yeah. of the season, uh, but they're in a good position right now at 62 and 50. MLB Live on Facebook Watch returns Thursday, August 16th. We have two more NL East rivals squaring off. We will watch the first place Philadelphia Phillies play host to the New York Mets. It's game one of a doubleheader. Coverage begins 4 o'clock Eastern on MLB Live on Facebook Watch. And for Mark DeRosa, FP Santangelo, and Dan Colco, I'm Scott Braun. Thanks for watching MLB Live on Facebook Watch, at Scott Braun on Instagram. Hop on there. Any questions for anyone in the booth, we'll answer them right now. See you soon.